It's Jax. What up, Dallas? Let's go. Martin Luther had a dream, but Freddy Krueger had a Ruger. X Malcolm hopped the picture, so now we back to the future. Now we back to these losers embracing death like they used to. Poking out they just but listen, son, now you leaking that future. Huh? So who's the shooter? Hum, is it your man? Or was it a fan? Or was it a stand? Huh? I would beg to differ. In hindsight, I bet you he said he was not a nigga. Plus Biggie Smalls was just minding his business, yo. Smoking in Optimo. Somebody got the drop, the homie Biggie has got to go. And they couldn't stop it, no, I wish that they could Yeah, the world needs change, but man, I wish that we would So what a long frown, a man home from a four pound His blood ripples on the floor from the wall sound His mama sitting at the wake, hoping the Lord's found Another dead, another gone now, damn George Elliott said that it's best to be what you want to be Fuck it, do what you want to do So I do what I want to do Bet you did it to floss Bitch, I did what I wanted Bet you did it and lost Bitch, I did it and won it Shit, I'm never coming back Listen, I just want to rap Gee, I told you all of that On about a dozen tracks I don't give a fuck I just, I just, I just want to rap Spitting fire on this track Like a fucking thundercat Plus this mic is bleeding roho This shit is a no-no Rolling in that low-low Plus I'm from that ball to mo, need a folk, folk, smoking on my logo. Ready for the woe, and we so so, silly with the flow. Somebody got a bo bo. Heard the lames, and I swear they so so. Too much love for the fame just to go broke. You said think I had the rap game in a trope, huh? Never think I got the whole world in a rope, though. Gotta think of damn dog, you crazy. Is he the next Jay Z? My crystal ball is hazy, but I don't know, maybe. Welcome back to the Insane Shake Podcast. It's your host, Chris, here. Uh, and <clears throat> excuse me, and joining me all the way from the West Coast, my man, fellow critic. People's critic Tim, what's going on, man? What's up, man? It's good to be back. Yeah, it's good I'm to be a, back. You know, just had you on little, last week. Yeah, I was on last week. We were. What did we review? It was uh, uh, Kingsman. Kingsman. So we yeah, were doing that's the right. Review for Kingsman. I'm, yeah. So I'm a little under the weather today, but I'm I'm excited to be on, man. One oh damn. Those, yeah, uh, sorry to hear fall that. Fall colds. Yeah, oh, dude, bro, it's going around, man. It's 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 going around. Um, the weather, like it was. I swear to God, like earlier this week, it was like 90 degrees. Today, it's like a, it's a nice breezy 70 degrees or something like that. Yeah, this yeah. weather is what kills you. Yeah, exactly. It's it funny, I left with my, with my friend and she was sick. And uh, yeah, so now I'm sick. So <laughs> I, can, yeah. I can trace it back to where it came from. Yeah. The next, that, later on that night, like my throat was itching. I was like, man, hell no. <laughs> like, like, damn it. Did I? Fuck, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah. So it's funny. It's funny you mentioned this, right? So uh, yeah, this is again. This is gonna be another one of those random shows where we just talk about all kind of random stuff. But you're, you're talking about sickness. It kind of got me, right? So my new job. There's like there's a handful of us black people. Not like it's it's pretty good. It's a, it's a good enough mixture of black folks where I don't feel like I'm completely alone, right? Uh, and my office mate, she's black, and uh, we have our uh, another lady who's black, always coming around talking to us, right? And we've been bonding lately. Over the fact that every one of our, our, our other co-workers, who are mostly white, are discussing a shit. And um, they don't wash their hands when they go to the bathroom. Oh, no. Oh, no. I remind me of this black woman I used to work with. She hated that. She would call like people's candy bowls feces candy. Mm. She was like, they don't wash their hands, so I'm not eating none of this candy. Oh, no. <laughs> so so, so this, is how, this is how the conversation started, right? And because, again, I try to keep mostly to myself anyway at work. So I come into my office, and my office mate's already there, and the other lady is there, too. And they're talking about it. And the first thing she said, my, my office mate says to me, she's like, because I walked in, and somebody mentioned, another one of my coworkers had mentioned that there were donuts in the cafeteria. I just ignored it because I'm like, I'm not touching that shit at all because they're out there. It's already too late. You got to get that shit when it first comes out. So I walk into my office, and my office mate, she's like, she's like, Chris, listen, whatever you do, do not eat the donuts. Do not. Eat. I'm like, oh, no, don't worry about it. I don't do that anyway. I'm, I don't eat any of the food. Like, if, I've learned this lesson a long time ago that if you don't get to the food within the first mm, 30 seconds it gets put out, don't touch it. It's, it's, it's been contaminated already. So she then proceeds to tell me what happened was she had went in there and she wasn't going to get one, but she saw what happened. Another one of our coworkers went in 
and saw the donuts there and then started touching them to cut them in half because he only wanted oh, a half of the donut. No. And he, she was like, he touched like three of them. No. And I was like, no. You should, I, I would call no. HR, man. That's no. a violation. No, 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 I'm not. No, that's just, oh, what? Uh, there was another one. And so, again, not everybody, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be nice here. Not everybody who um is we have two, there's two buildings here and not everybody is in like it, they're, they're office spaces so it's like it's not all the same company not all, all right. my company and one of the other buildings is the gym that's the gym i go to to you know work out during the week so uh it's been interesting watching two things happen one the gym is always cold and we couldn't figure out why that the temperature would always be set down to like 64 degrees which is ridiculous i can't work out in 64 degree weather right that doesn't make any fucking right. sense um, and I would always turn it back up and I couldn't figure out what it was. So first thing I figured out was the reason why it's down to that temperature is we have coworkers who want to go work out, but they don't want to sweat cause they don't want to take the showers. Mm-hmm. So they're going in, they're work, doing a workout, but they're not generating a sweat. Cause they don't want to take a shower. They put their work clothes back on and they go right back into work. Yep. They have some office too. Yeah. So that was one thing that I got, and I was like, "Uh, that how what what do we do? No, we can't. What, first of all, you're not working out. You're not. You're not. No. What's the point of even like? Because if you're not gonna work uh, generate a sweat, then I mean, it's one thing if you get on the treadmill and you're like, I've seen, I've had coworkers who do this. They just come in for uh, they put their like their their tennis shoes on and they just walk on the treadmill for a little bit. That's fine. Like that's just like going for a walk. Uh, away from your desk, like there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm talking about people that would literally go change, put some 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 clothes on, and run the treadmill, or they'll go and they'll lift weights, and they'll put their clothes right back on. I mean, they're not even bird bathing in in the shower. Uh, in the, in the, yeah, they're not even bird bathing. Like it's just like what? Just full on funk back at work. Just water. full on funk back in the work, and I was just I'm flabbergasted. Like I'm fucking thirty. I have worked in an office for a long time. I should not be disgusted or shocked by the behavior of people who work in offices, but I, here I am. Uh, the second thing I've seen is I'll be in there changing, either changing to go into workout or I'm um, getting ready to take the shower myself. I had because uh, um, some some people on the first floor of that because there's two buildings there. One building has the um, the gym in it. People that work in that in that building with the gym and sometimes instead of using the bathroom, the other bathroom, they'll come into the gym bathroom to use it because it's more. You know, I'm not gonna lie, it's more private. I've done it before myself. I've walked from building right. two to building one, gone to the gym because nobody ever, almost nobody uses the gym anyway. It's a quiet little, nice little. You know, it's pretty spacious. It's a nice little bathroom, right? So some people do that. I've seen people go and use that bathroom, come out of the bathroom, straight to the door. Uh, that's a violation. I literally like had an alarm that goes off. It's a dude, Every bro. People do that, bro. I had one dude who literally, I'm, 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 I'm thinking I'm, I'm changing out or I'm putting my clothes back on after taking a shower. Comes out, he's like, "You had to go to work," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I did." You know, and he's like, "Oh, that's good." And then as he's walking out of the, out, he's walking out of the, the, the stall, and it goes right to the door, and I'm just, I just, I just stare at the door, and I'm like. Now I gotta use a napkin to get out of the door because I just watched, <laughs> dude, dude, and I know he didn't just go in there and take a piss because you can hear. And I'm like, bruh, come on, like, yeah, man. you gotta wash your hands. It's one. It's, it doesn't take that long. How much time are you saving? It's it, it is one of the most interesting things too because you know there's this 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 you know um, there's this belief or this stereotype of like. You know, uh, poor people and people who are below the poverty line and, you know, uh, well, they're dirty and they do this and they do that. And I'm here to tell you, um, I think the more money people get, the more disgusting they get because none of these people are struggling. None of the people I work with, these are not these are people in the top 20 percent of income earners. All right. So this is their this this idea that somehow a cleanliness is tied to you know you making money it is bullshit and it it is it is, it is, it is it's just something fa- it's one of those fascinating things to see that you know we 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 tend to think that we, we have people that tend to look down like you would you would see a a person like a person who works at mcdonald's right you i would uh-huh. guarantee you if you had a person and uh, you, you went to a random person and was like go and shake that man's hand you'd have some people that feel kind of weird oh well i'm not sure what they some but if you said, hey, this person here makes $100,000 a year, oh, 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 shake my hand, stuff like that. That person who shook your hand at $100,000 a year probably didn't wash their hands. 
I, I can tell you right now, more of them don't wash their hands than the people who cook your food at McDonald's. Because you know what happens at McDonald's? They have the sign up that says you need to wash your hands. You know? Yeah, you, you don't wash your hands, you're going to get fired. You're going to get fired, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. But, and, and here's the thing. It's worse, almost almost worse in a um, corporate environment. Because you think, so this person doesn't wash their hands, comes back and touching all the door, and all the doorknobs are metal, metal, first of all. So they're metal mm-hmm. doorknobs. Um... And you got to touch them. You got keypads. You have uh, computer uh, computer keyboards. Like the amount of germ. Then you have the shared kitchen. So you have the kitchens and, and stuff like do the amount of stuff. This is why I again I am not one of the fans of the company potluck or the shared food. Like if it, if I don't see it get put out there, I'm not eating it because you can't Yo. trust them. You you cannot trust them. You want to hear something really gross? Oh, so God. we have we have like this really cool. So on our floor, we had like this. So our our office has sick rooms where people when they're sick they can go lay down in. I I think people are in there jacking off and having sex. So I never go in there, <laughs> which probably is not too far from the truth. Yeah, I was like, man, you run, you run a blue light through that joint, man. It's gonna look disgusting. So our floor, our my division has like this room they created, which was like a sick room, like our own sick room. It's quiet. It's got like a small window. Uh, it's you know like so when the sun's you know setting, there's no light. So if it's when it's dark, it's dark. Like it's you know they got little curtains on there. It's great, right? Man, they sent the email out. There was lice on the couch. Hey, so someone, them. either their kid or them, like brought in lice into our safe space, man. Hey, bro. So now I can't even go in there anymore because now there's a lice couch. Come on, bro. Come come on. Life. There's an email. They tried to be polite about it. I was like, hold up, man. I can read between the lines, man. This says lice. <laughs> like, I know what that is, man. Uh, people are gross. I was like, man, who did? I think it's someone with kids. I think I know who it was, too. I think we, we yeah. sort of narrowed down who it was. It, it It is one of the most fascinating things about working in these environments. When you see people. And it, it's like, you guys are disgusting. Like, what are you... Yeah, like stall the door, like the the bathrooms are will be disgusting. Like the amount of times I, wa- I walk into the bathroom again, these are corp. These are the the stereotypes you have a corporate environment and like these you know people that make a lot of money and do this and like again the the the, the average person's salary in that office building is probably well above the the national median. All right, like, right, like it's well above it. There's always pee on the floor. <laughs> uh, dude, we There's about always floor, pee man. on the floor. Like it is, it is just one of those things. Like, what are you doing? Like, and it, what are you doing? It's a toilet. It's, just, it's not hard to find. It's <laughs> like, easy. Bro, come on, a- like, aim and shoot, man. It's not hard. Like, dude, there's been times when like you're in there and like I can because like our um our uh uh the 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 sinks and the Paper towel dispensers are all automated. So I can tell when you didn't <laughs> you didn't wash your yeah. hands because it doesn't click on. It doesn't you don't hear it. And I hear the door open. I'm just like, are you fucking serious right now? Yeah, like, it's everything you need. We got in there, man. Soap, lotion, automated dryers, paper towels. We have everything bro. necessary for you to be as 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 clean as possible. And people just refuse to do it. Just not even a bare minimum. They just like, nope, I'm out. Not watching anything. I'm just no, go back th- to work. This is why. This this is on, honestly, this is why when um, shows like The Walking Dead are both super believable but also unbelievable. The super believable in the fact that yes, this stuff could definitely spread, could definitely spread because people do not wash their hands. But two, uh, I don't believe it because there's no way more and more people wouldn't be dead because, god damn it. You're not gonna clean. You're, you're just not clean. I. It's yeah, just people are, people are gross. No, and no one prepared me for that when I was a kid. No like part of adulthood is is realizing that people are disgusting. Well, because as a kid, you're taught the opposite, right? As a kid, right. and I think this. I think this is a, there's just a, a huge. Know, we're just going to such a long tangent here, but like <laughs> I think this is just such a, one of those things that goes into the problem with our society is. Once you hit 18, well, actually, you know, I'll give you like 25. Because even at 18, people just oh, you haven't learned everything yet. But like once you hit 25, and particularly when you get over 30, 
people really start thinking that you've entered into adulthood, which means you don't have to learn anything anymore. Or you don't have to keep up the things that you learned growing up as a kid. Those things aren't necessary anymore. And it's just farther from the truth. Like, if anything, you have to, as an adult, you have to continually learn and continually practice the things that you grew up in. You were, 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 you know, beat into your head sometimes, you know, literally, uh, as a child to 18. It's like, come on. Like, we taught as a kid, wash your hands before you eat. Wash your hands before you do this. Do this and do this. Make sure you're clean. If you if you miss the toilet, clean it up. You're told all that shit, right. right? But then once you become an adult, you're just like, oh, somebody else will do it. Oh, I don't have to worry about that. Like, what makes you think as a kid, it wasn't okay to not wash your hands after you use the bathroom? But as a 30, 40 year old adult, you're like, ah, fuck it, it's okay now. Like, what changed in that year? Like, you, 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 if anything, you got older and you're now more susceptible to disease. So oh, you're sure. closer, you're closer to death now. If anything, you should be more watched. You should be scrubbing the fucking hands. But like, I, I don't understand. It's, 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 it's oh God, it, it's so amazing to me. It's just, you know, you see people like, I was in a meeting like a couple weeks ago and again, like, some of our higher up managers and things like that. I was watching one of them just yawning like a fucking like animal, like mouth all open. Just, and I'm just like, what the? I'm just like, ma'am, cl- what? Cover your mouth. Like, what are you? What are you doing? Like, I'm just, I was just like, somebody else is presenting, and I'm just fascinated, just staring at this woman. Like, like, what are you doing? Like, I'm staring at her. Like, you stare at like animals in the zoo. That's what it was. Like a fucking animal. Like, what are you doing? your mouth you ever see somebody sneeze and like they sneeze oh my god i was doing something we were in um shanty and i went to watch it last week and so um i'm in the theater i'm in the line to get the popcorn dude behind me is sick sneezing into his hand pulls out this dirty used sneeze tissue and is blowing his nose and and i'm just like whatever happened to Going around a corner, going somewhere else around from people, not blowing your nose literally two inches behind me into your dirty snot rag that you're going to put right back into your pocket. You then don't wash your hands, so you didn't blew you blew your nose into the, the, this this snot rag. You have not washed your hands, and then you're going to go up to the you're going to put your hands on the counter. Like what is going on here, folks? That's pretty gross. It is disgusting. It, I could just feel the germs. You know, it's yeah. just, it's, 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 it's one of the things I did not, and you know what the thing about it is when I used to work from home more often, because there were times I was working from home all the time, uh, I didn't have to deal with it anymore. And it, was, it, it was, it was glorious. I didn't have to deal with the, uh, disgusting, uh, you know, hell hole of germs. That is no, no, right? Deal space. With other people's yeah. grossness. Like, yeah. Your own filth is fine. Other people's filth is not. No, that's one thing is it's my own filth because it's my own filth and whatever happens, happens. But once you got in public, it's like, yo, have a responsibility. You know? <laughs> have a responsibility to everybody else. You, you know? have a responsibility to not be disgusting yeah. in public. Yeah, not be yo, it's one thing to be an animal in your own fucking house. I don't want everybody else knowing I'm a fucking animal. All right. <laughs> Shit. Come on. You got to present as like a human being when you're out in public, not like some savage look, you never had look, in I, home training. Look, I've been getting to the point where now uh, I need to go pantless around the house now. That's just my yeah. thing now. It's like, fuck it. You know what? I want to see what this pantless thing is, you know, because everybody's talking about I take my pants off and walk around the house. I, you know what? You know what? Uh, I, I think I like it. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, it's, I'm it's, feeling it. It's, it's glorious, man. It's, it's, it's glorious. glorious it's glorious. The dog, the dog's are gonna be like a fucking crazy, <laughs> you know. But even I think Maximus is starting to get used to it now. He's starting going, "Ah, oh, fuck it, man. All right, is that what you're gonna do now? Fuck it, all right." But I'm loving, it. I'm loving the pants. But here's the thing: when I get people coming over, I put pants on because I don't need, it. you know, that's yeah, just, that's, just, yeah, <laughs> that's a social house, contract, man. all right? Just the, hear, hear my boxer briefs hanging out with the shirt on. <laughs> right, that, that's the social contract we all signed as adults, all right? You gotta you gotta put the pants on when people come over. Just like you gotta yeah. wash your hands when you leave the fucking bathroom. It's like just, that's right. the contract. Come on, man. Little stuff like, you know, make sure your bathroom's clean when you have guests. That's it. It's a little. The little bare stuff. minimum. The bare minimums. Come on. The bare minimums. The bare minimums. Come on. We gotta do this. Ah oh, man, this is this this you know it's it's moments like this. Like every time I see somebody go from the stall of the door, I'm like, ah, this is how we got Trump. I understand it now. <laughs> it makes sense people when not, you, they're not caring about the welfare of other people. Yo, when, when you put it in that context, 
everything that's happened so far makes sense. Because right. is it that far of a cry to realize that the person who goes from the stall to the door without washing their hands, it then makes sense as a well, like you don't care about you don't give a fuck about anything. So of course you would you don't care about Trump because yeah sure fuck it why not what's the what what did Trump say what's the worst that can happen yeah. you know yeah dysentery we're, we're cholera right and all the other crazy stuff yeah we're seeing the worst right now and it's not even the absolute worst it's yeah. just the worst yeah just it makes sense. Um, yeah, folks, so this is the insanity check. <laughs> uh, make sure you guys um, si- uh, subscribe on uh, iTunes for each of the individual shows we have. The Insanity Check, our weekly show, um, particularly Super Tuesday recap, um, because ma- here's the thing. I love that everybody signs up and subscribes on the main feed. That's great. But you're right. not going to get everything if you do that. We have way too many shows we're going to be reviewing and way too many things coming out in the future that it's just going to be too much to put on the main feed. So there are going to be certain things you're only going to be able to get if you subscribe to each main individual feed. So for instance, I've already decided we are going to be reviewing Star Trek discovery. Our first review comes out next week. We're going to record next week. We're doing it three episodes at a time. So the third episode comes out this weekend. So hopefully we'll be able to have all three of those uh, episodes reviewed uh, in one episode, one downloadable file file for you probably Wednesday on the super Tuesday feed. That's only going to be available on the Super Tuesday feed. I'm not making it available on the MTR Network feed itself. You have to subscribe to Super Tuesday by itself in order to get that. Um, same thing happens with Unimus Decision every week. This uh, every week of the football week, um, uh, D Palm is recording a quick snap. A little, I think it's like 15, maybe 15 minutes episodes where he talks about he recaps what happened uh, that week in the football. If you want to hear those, you got to subscribe to Unanimous Decision. You know, so. Um, and letting everybody know that, and we're going to be having more stuff come out on those feeds, so that you you're going to want to subscribe on those. So, um, like I said, I know we're hopefully going to be re- doing some. I don't know how we're breaking out, but we, there will be reviews coming of the gifted at some point. So yeah, that'll be on I'm there. For that. Yeah. Um. So that'll be on there. Uh. I'm gonna try to get are, some are more. You doing, are you doing Inhumans? So I want to. Okay. So here's the thing. Right. <laughs> so I watched I two hours. I watched it. Started recording. I watched the two hours premiere. So, um, so what did you think? I, I felt like it didn't have, it felt flat. And, and it's odd coming from the same people who put out Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that it just felt like a flat show with no real punch, no real characters I really cared about. Nothing interesting really happens. I just was kind of like, this is kind of bland. It, it should be cool. It's just not. So, again, I haven't talked to Deep on about it yet. I don't know if he's seen it yet. And we'll, we're reviewing our first review is coming tomorrow of the first two episodes. Um, and I'll be per- I'll be blunt. If I just saw just those two the, that those two the, that two episodes that two hour premiere, I was probably gonna recommend to Deepon that we not review it week to week, because right. like you, it it was it I am sorry it was bland. Uh, and and I'll put this out there now because I've seen a lot of people say um it wasn't as bad as other as critics were saying, and I totally agree with that. It was not the horror shit show that people yeah. said it was. Um, and so if you view it in that respect, then yeah, it's not that bad, but it's also not good. <laughs> you know, that what, what they showed us, is just fundamentally not good from the perspective of what you said. I've seen four seasons of Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and two seasons of Agent of Carter. This is the same studio that did those. So, yeah, if you, exa- so it seems odd that they're the same so, studio. So you can't, like, it, I can't not look at this and and view it in that lens. If this was, you know, five years ago, then yeah, I'd be more interested in sticking around with Inhumans. But like the just off the action scenes alone, they Man. were horrendously bad. And yeah. this is again, people we've seen Agent Carter and Agents of Shield, both of which have way better action scenes. And this was a show that had so it's like I wasn't feeling it. But then I saw the preview for the rest of the season. And right. that looked good. Like the preview, <laughs> the preview for the rest of the season looked better than any trailer they put out for that for that IMAX uh to two hour premiere. It looks way more interesting. You saw people using their powers. You I saw um <clears throat> I saw it looked like better fights. So it, it's making me think that the, the the push to get this into IMAX was rushed and they ran out of money. They they used all their money to get those beautiful and they they were nice shots of the scenery, but everything else fell to the wayside. 
Because I right. it looked like everything else looked better. So I'm going to continue going on it, but I am... To, to me, this is one of the worst shows I've seen. I, I, I and yeah. that's it's one of the worst comic book shows we, we're we're going to review. Um, and I'm saying that from somebody who who reviewed the first you know season and a half of Gotham. I'm sorry, those first two episodes of Gotham look like better than anything that we saw <laughs> in, in Inhumans. And and, I'm, and, and just I'm being real, Gotham's even still on. To be honest, yeah. Every time I see a problem, I'm like, yo, they're still running this, right? So. Um, and Fox cut stuff quick, right. and they're still holding on to Gotham. Well, the, the ratings were strong until this season. That's why. Somehow the ratings were still good. So I don't. I don't know. Like I said, I'm. We'll see. Um, I, I there and again, listen to our review. I'll go into more details of what some of my issues were because it, it wasn't. It was beyond just that. Like I think fundamentally they made some really just poor decisions uh, with putting that show together, and it just like you said, it fell flat for me. Like there was nothing that made me really go other than that the 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 bumper from the next show, nothing really drew me into like I gotta watch this week to week. It just it yeah it 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 was surprising how weak it was, and I can't like if you think about it, almost none of the humans use their powers. No, and You're and, right. and 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 when you have a show like The Flash, you can't tell me. That it's a money issue, because that doesn't make any sense. Like we're we've got hell. It's not. A, it wasn't a money issue when you had Agent Shield. So no. this is supposed to be your. This was your. This was your tent pole. You you were gonna you push this in IMAX. Like you 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 said we're gonna do this. You made a big deal about it, and then you came out and you couldn't even have them human using their powers. It just I don't know. Yeah. I think maybe maybe it gets stronger. Maybe it, it's oh, man, there's potential, so. but like that that two hour premiere was, it was not good. When is it supposed to air? Like what night of the week is supposed to come Friday? Out? It's Friday to eight. Uh, that's already a death deal. Mm-hmm. Right. So Jesus. apparently, it's, apparently it won the first. And I think a lot of people wanted to check it out themselves. So it did well that first hour, but the second hour it kind of fell off. Um, but the first hour it did well. So we'll we'll see. I, I've seen some commentary from other people who said it wasn't that bad. They're, they they liked it, and and that's good. But here's the thing: I've mm, I that, that I expected more. I expected better. I expected a lot better. I mean, hell, right. people said that hey, the first season of Agent Shield took a little while to get to it. That's cool. But first of all, that first episode of Agent Shield was way better than this. Um, and then two, Agent Shield season one had 22 episodes. This has eight. So Agent Shield had time to build up. And that's what they were clearly doing. They were building up to get to their, you know, their big, their big reveals halfway through the season. Um, right. This show did not do this. It does not have the time to do that. You have eight episodes. You just wasted two of them. So right. you got six episodes now. So I, I don't know. It, we'll, we'll see uh, what goes on with that. But yeah, so that'll be on the Super Tuesday feed. That's going to be the main on all the feeds uh, in humans. But things like uh, Star Trek won't be. So make sure you guys get that. Um, so check out our Patreon or the MTR Premium account. So Patreon is uh, patreon.com slash MTR Network. And then the, if you just want to do MTR Premium, uh, just go to mtrnetwork.net and go to the Premium page. See that there. And I literally, right before we started this, I got, and I'll put the pictures up on Instagram, we got uh, two designs for, uh, that are, that are uh, I got the hoodies, uh, the sample nice. hoodies. And so uh, hopefully I'll get those out before we go to New York Comic Con next week. So uh, keep an eye out for store.mtrnetwork.net uh, to get hoodies. If you want, if you want an MTR Network hoodie, um, they will be hopefully ready by then. And um, all right, let's get into some of this. Some like I said, today's going to be. Um, so the funny thing about this is, we're going to get some politics later on. But uh, the great thing about what's happened the last week, two weeks, is um, Donald Trump has been going after athletes, which moves uh, the political talk to unanimous decision. <laughs> and it frees us up here. Then Zany check talk about all the shit. Yeah. So uh, D Palm's forced to not stick to sports and to talk to poli- talk about politics. And <laughs> I get to have some fun. So uh, we're Tim and I are gonna we're gonna talk with some entertainment and um, movie, TV show news, things like that. And I guess the first thing kind of going and we were saying like the inhuman stuff. Like like I said, already said it. Like I- I'm gonna see. Like, I- I'm I'm interested in seeing what D Palm thinks on it. And I know you know other people you know seem to like it, but. Uh, I, I, again, not the worst thing I've ever seen, but definitely not up to the standards we've seen from other shows we have. 
you know. Yeah, that's the, I think that's really what what you're saying yeah. is true. Is like we've we've had other shows, whether it be The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow, and you know, Ends the Shield. So we know that people could do these shows well. So to see a show that had so much hype and build up, sort of miss the mark <laughs> so badly is really concerning. Yeah. Like we know how to do these shows, so how did you miss the mark so bad? And the thing, like I was seeing somebody say something about uh, you know Inhumans and 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 uh, I think they were making a thing about the Gifted, but I don't think they were they were like I've seen good things from the Gifted so far, but um, right. they were wondering if it's superhero fatigue, and I'm like, no, I I, I need people to stop saying the superhero fatigue thing that doesn't exist. All right, no. superhero fatigue isn't a thing. Like there there's two things going on here. One. A lot of people were never going to be in, committed to like superhero TV shows to begin with. Like uh, uh, Joy from Black Girl Nurse was talking about this yesterday on Twitter. She was just like, "Yeah, I don't watch these a lot of these superhero shows because it's too big of a commitment. It's a lot of, the twenty two episodes. Like if right. you think about it, there's not a lot of shows out here to still do twenty two episode seasons. All right, so committing to a twenty two. Um, no, just not restart my. We're not restarting my computer now. <laughs> um, uh, committing to 22 episode season of anything is a long, is, is a, is a big thing. And it's, it's kind of weird because it's a, it, not new, but I remember growing up like 20 long season was a thing. Oh, everyone had long season. Yeah. Like uh, Star Trek was 24, 25 episodes a season. You know, it was a normal thing. Uh, nowadays people think it's too long, but I think it's because, our viewing habits have changed, and now we want to be able to binge things. We want shorter seasons that we can binge in a weekend or something like that. And that's fine, and our viewing habits have changed, but um, I think that people who make the TV shows need to adjust to that. So this idea of being fatigued by superhero shows, it's not that. It's like people just want things that are good. and Right. It, they, because we have so many options, they don't have the patience to stick around right. for something that's not good. And so, some things like... T- again, a TV show is a huge commitment. It's, honestly, TV shows are kind of like the like one step up from comic books. So yeah, a lot of people might go to the movies to watch a watch a comic book thing because it's literally what two hours, maybe two and a half hours out of your time, you're done. Right. TV show, you're committing at least twenty two hours, and that's if it's season one. If it's like the fifth season of Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., in order to get that and really, really understand that fifth season, you got to watch the four seasons before then. It's a huge commitment. It's the same reason why a lot of people, hey, they might like comic book movies, but they don't, they don't read comic books. It's just, it's, it's that kind of, it, people don't have that kind of commitment anymore to things, or they never did, or they were never going to have that. So you need to understand yeah. that, right? Um, yeah. So you were going to say it? Oh, no, 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 you're right. You're 100% correct. Like, I think it's a commitment, and yeah. people just aren't willing to make that kind of commitment. Right. And then the other thing, too, is if it's not good, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I, 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 no, sure. no bullshit. Like, if I'm going to, I'm reviewing it, so I'm going to watch it, right? There are other people who only watched last night or only watched that first episode so they could clown on, on the live tweeting. Right. That's like for everybody else. I heard it's not good. I'm not gonna watch it. I'm gonna wait until somebody I trust says it's good. Then I'll watch it. Like that's the normal thing about this. So it's not fatigue. It's it's not good. It's it's like when yeah. people go, oh well, you know, the box office in this in in in, in this year in 2016 was 17 was down. I was like, cause he had a lot of shitty movies. Yeah. <laughs> like. Uh, just, just a, a lot of the big tentpole movies were terrible, like Transformers yeah. and The Mummy, and these things just didn't hit. The, the, the Pirates movie that came out, like yeah, you had three big summer tentpole movies that that were trash. You had Valerian that Valerian was trash. Yeah. Like you had a bunch of these things that just were not good. And and again, going to the access thing and what we have available, you know, uh, Netflix, Hulu, and, and Amazon are here putting out high quality either movies original movies or original tv shows why go out to a theater and watch something and pay money for something that's not good where i have hours of material i can binge at home that is good that i do like so right. you're now having a competition for the summer movies that people didn't have before like it used to be if you wanted something you wanted to watch something you had to go to the theater to watch a summer movie because that's the one thing you had to do now it's like oh shit you know um, I can I can binge this show that I didn't get a chance to watch earlier because it's on Netflix. 
You know, right. like exactly. It's it's a. It, 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 I don't know, man. It's one of those things that I think people uh, need to stop finding these weird things to um, to blame, like superhero fatigue. No, it's just, it's not good. No, <laughs> it's not good. It's not fatigue because Thor's gonna make a lot of money. You can't and tell so me. Is Wars, you, and so is Black Panther. Yeah. Like it's not a fatigue. You you had three you had three comic book movies that made over eight hundred million dollars already this year. You had Guardians already. of the Galaxy, Spider Man, and Wonder Woman. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. more than that because didn't didn't Logan get over eight hundred? Did they do, do it like just yeah, yeah seven? Logan too. I don't know if Logan get over eight hundred. I think it still did seven, but it still it's an R rated movie. So it's like you have all. Over seven hundred fifty million dollars each of these movies. Then you still got Thor, and you still got uh, Justice League coming out this year. It's not superhero fatigue, guys. I'm sorry, it's it's not. It's, it's not. You know, people and, and like, not everybody's gonna be into everything. And 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 that's always what it's, it's always been. It's always been. Um, you're finding out there's a limit. Because I mean, as much as we say we like the Flash, Agent of Shield. Those movie, the, the, those things are still in a, 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 a there's there's a small part of the market. When you look oh, at the actual sure. numbers of people who are actually watching this stuff, it's still small. You know, even when comic books were selling a lot, when you broke down what those numbers were, it was still a small amount of people reading those things. So this is not a huge deal. It's not. It's not. A, it's, it was never a huge market that you're tapping into for this stuff. You're bringing some new people in. But it's never been to the level that people think. It, 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 it never has and it never will be. You know, there's some people just don't like that stuff. You know, some of those people, they'll watch some of these things. Um, because I can get my girlfriend to watch some of the Marvel movies, but not all of them. It's just not, that's not her thing. I got to right. I got I to know which ones. Like, she'll watch Black Panther. She ain't going to go watch Thor. <laughs> you know, right? Like, I already <laughs> just, know she's not gonna. Watch right? Yeah, I know. You, I know she's not gonna watch those. She's not gonna watch Justice League, no matter what happens with Justice League, whether it's good or not, whether I think it's good or not. She's not gonna want to watch uh, a Justice League. You know, I just got to see Wonder Woman because I mean, it was Wonder Woman. You know, it was an iconic Wonder Woman. You know what I didn't take her to see? Spider Man. <laughs> it's just, you know, you got it. You got it. You, you, you're you're not gonna hit every 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 character is not going to be interesting enough to get everybody there. You know, even somebody, someone like Spider-Man, which is the biggest combo character of all time, it's not going to be enough to get people in, into the theater to watch some of that stuff. So, um, I think we're finding out, I, find, I think some people are finding it out. There's a limit to how much is, um, there's a limit to some of this stuff. And that's fine, but it's, you know, don't overreach. <laughs> You're not going to, you know, yeah, the movies are doing a big thing because it's, it's not a huge commitment. Um, speaking of DC, um, so I was seeing this article that came out of like this yesterday, uh, news came out about how DC is going to de-emphasize the whole cinematic universe idea going forward. <laughs> oh God. So, it, oh, God. you know what I find weird though? I, I, I don't know why that was news. Yeah. Like, it, it's like, we kind of, it's this weird thing that happens with DC where people regurgitate the stuff that already came out like I'm like wait didn't we already know this when they were saying this before or are they just finally now confirming what we've been talking about for like literally months right. and so it feels like it feels like it's old news already and it's weird um so let's see uh let's see they're not gonna give they're not gonna give the idea of continuity but they want to de-emphasize the idea that all these movies are occupying the same space our intention certainly moving forward is, to, is using the continuity to help make sure nothing is diverging in a way that doesn't make sense, but there's no instance, insistence upon an overall storyline or interconnectivity in the universe, says uh, Diane Nielsen, uh, Nelson, uh, drawing nods from the top brass around her. Um, I think that she just said a lot of words that mean nothing. Not, she said a whole lot of nothing. Because this is the same, I mean, people are freaking out about this, but real talk, this is kind of the same thing Kevin Feige was saying. Yeah. Yeah. It, sure. It's all connected, but like, Ant Man has connections to other movies, but it's still Ant Man. It's by itself. You know, Doctor right. Strange has connections to other movies, but it's still Doctor Strange is his own story. He tells it by itself. Same thing with Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, there is no overall story between all that connects all these movies together. Like, there there really isn't. They're all kind of on their own, telling their own story. You know, there are connections to other movies here and there, and they come together in Avengers, but. This is the same thing. Like people are saying, though, they're not trying to do the Marvel. They're getting away from. Do- this is this is nothing new. 
Because <laughs> like, yeah. here's the thing, because then, cause then Jeff John comes in and says, talking about Aquaman, he's like, uh, the movie's not about another movie. Some of the movies do, uh, some of the characters, uh, some of the, some of the movies do connect the characters together like Justice League, but like with Aquaman, um, our goal is not to connect Aquaman to every movie. Moving forward, you'll see the DC movie universe being a universe, but one that comes from the heart of the filmmakers who, who are creating them. Again, love Jeff Johns. He said nothing here. Yeah. This is not news. Like, okay, like it's Aquaman. I'm expecting an Aquaman story. I'm not expecting Aquaman to be like Justice League 2.0. But right. we knew that already. Like it's Aquaman. Like we're expecting an Aquaman right. story. Like I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I just don't see anything new that they're saying here. Um, well, maybe I, they're putting up some sort of because like that a lot of their films don't feel like they take place in the same. Like so, even though Ant Man is own thing, it feels like what's happening takes place in the same right. universe as everything else. Right. And maybe they're trying to because like it is. Say what you want about Suicide Squad. Like it doesn't feel like it takes place in the same world as Batman vs Superman. What? Well, that goes back to my other point, though, right? Because it's like, okay, so, but you already did this. Because yeah. Suicide Squad. You, you, Suicide Squad. Yeah, Suicide Squad didn't really connect to anything either. <laughs> you know? So it's like, because they literally, they literally, they literally destroyed the city in, in Suicide Squad, and you're like going, like, so, so nobody called Batman? Nobody yeah. Called, yeah. Like, nobody, no nobody called Batman. Can't no, be nobody, 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 uh, no mention of him. You, well, you had Batman show up um, at the beginning with uh, Joker. In the flashback for Joker, and he's showing oh, in flashbacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's showing in flashbacks, but it's like literally the show. So you're not gonna call, okay? But you, you you did this already, right? Um, I know they they have come out and said that they are planning on having a whole disconnected universe, basically Elseworlds, where they have like, and again, I think that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I think I think having these separated films that don't be that, that don't tie into this this connected universe is like the, the kind of like one shot comics. They just go do a movie stand. I think that's a great idea. Um, as long as they're done right and they're the right thing, like uh, yeah, I don't. This, that's that's, the, that's the, the point. I don't trust them to do it the right way. Because the first one you're looking at doing is this Joker, Joker movie. Mm, yeah, my problem isn't that it's an Elseworlds as a standalone. It's that you're doing a Joker movie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, what are you doing a Joker about like, what? What? Like, I. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Like. It's one thing if you did a standalone Batman film, not connected, it had another another actor as Batman, and you're telling a specific Joker story. Um, you know, you're going from there. Like, I'm gonna throw this out there. I don't want them to do this. Say so you're doing the Killing Joke. You shouldn't, right. but let's say you're fucking doing that, and that's your idea, right? Which I'm afraid that's what they're thinking about doing. That's something different because that's not really a Joker story. That's a Batman story that has Joker in it. But okay. Like if you do something like that, that makes sense. You're doing, it's not in, in universe, but it's its own little, that's fine. You know, maybe you do, um, under the red hood and you do that live action and you're doing a story outside of it. It doesn't take place in, uh, the continuity of other actors and stuff like, like that's okay. But when you sit there and go, I'm doing a Joker origin film, <sighs> what? Yeah, yeah. We don't need, we don't need to know where he came from. I, that's, like the, yeah. What I would do would be do like a Batman and the Joker film, and just do like, you know, a, a movie, but it's like three different stories, short stories about right like these different interactions with Batman and the Joker. That way, you could tie in a Robin, you could tie in a Nightwing, you could tie in all those other elements to sort of springboard the rest of your non-universe universe with. Yeah, uh, and, it's, and, it's, and it will be a different way to structure a comic book film. I think people will be interested in that. A, a, absolutely. So I think there's a lot of cool things they could do, um, do by that. by doing them. I'm worried about just some of this. And and again, it's, it's not all bad because apparently, um, what well, stuff stuff is coming out of the news is basically that um, they weren't listening to Jeff Johns. Like the issue, <laughs> surprise, the, the, issue the issue was the issue was that Jeff Johns wanted things like he didn't want Zack Snyder as director he wanted the lighter tone for man of steel and he was basically ignored um and jeff johnson's the one that kind of brought in say hey let's get josh whedon to do the backup stuff for justice league and stuff like that so i i think that um if they listen to jeff johnson and, and basically the, the the bright side of this all is is it seems now that warner brothers understand that they need to listen to the dc side and this is something we've kind of been talking about that it might not even be DC itself. It might be Warner Brothers. And and oh, it's not, from it's not 100% Warner right. And, and from what I'm reading is it's it, it, that's what it is. 
Warner Brothers wasn't listening to DC. Like the comics people would be like, hey, hey, hey guys, um, maybe you shouldn't do that. Hey, hey, maybe you guys shouldn't put uh Barry Allen in the space shuttle scrap metal and put him into a regular suit instead of whatever the fuck that scrap that metal. Shit. Yeah. That's what Zack Snyder said it was. I mean, I'm just going off of what the man said. I'm going off of what his excuses were for this piece of shit costume they got Barry Allen running around into. But, like, if that's the case, then it totally makes sense. And I, a lot of the, th- the top come down to people saying, hey, I think that, you know, they're, they're going to stop trying to be like Marvel and stuff. But that's not, that was never the problem. DC no. could have come right out of the gate with the Justice League film. I, I always say this because it's a fucking Justice League. Right. I'm sorry. Like at this point, people put the Avengers to the same size as the Justice League. But listen, as a look, I am a Marvel guy, but that's fucking bullshit. All right. The the Avengers and tell the movies the Avengers weren't even the A squad when it came to Marvel Comics. All right. That was the X-Men. All right. Now, listen, to this. listen to this Warner, but Warner Brothers has always been sort of like given. I've been giving them the side eye this whole time because they're full of like really, really big hits and a lot of really, really big misses. So, th- so just this year, they had the Lego Ninjago movie. They had it, Annabelle Creation, Dunkirk, and Wonder Woman, right? Mm-hmm. But they also had the House, which bombed. <laughs> everything, everything, King Arthur, Max oh. Two, that stupid, unforgettable movie, Going in Style, Chips, uh, Kong Skull Island. Wait, did the Chips come out? Chips came out. Oh my god, I forgot Chips came out. Kong, Kong, Kong Skull Island, Fist Fight, the Lego Batman movie, Live by Night, Collateral Beauty, Fantastic Beast, The Accountant, Sully, War Dogs. Like, this is going back. Like, they've got a lot of hits and a lot of, like, ah, that's not going to work. I, what it is, is I, I think that DC and Warner Brothers are trying to pre- present themselves as this. Because even in, even in, in in John's statement, he says uh, they're they're trying to present themselves as the home of creativity for directors. It's not, but and and, and that's my thing. It's like, but we know it's not. Like for not. all the talk of what everybody else, uh, what other what other directors go through, with, like with Disney, like we see with the big temples things with like Marvel stuff, and then with like the Star Wars stuff. I hear is. It's not that these directors can't be, you know, um, creative, but it's like, yo, we have a process that that we we have a formula that makes good movies. If you can right. fit that, if you fit that formula, if you fit that process, it's fine. You can work within that. It's okay. If you don't want to do that, we go find somebody else. DC's like, uh, well, Warner Brothers is like, oh well, you know, we're giving everybody freedom, and I'm like, well, that's not true because you cut the movies to hell. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, love or hate these movies, like none of them are. I would say they're creative like that's some place like a24 that allows people to come right. in and be creative right like you want to see creative films like look at their list of films that are all super different and you know they're going to have some weird twist and they'll be structured differently and like that's cre- that's what cre- creativity in film looks like when you look at a24 it's not warner brothers but it's also just that you're we've seen the stuff in the we've seen the way you treat them, so you come in, and you, you give these, you give these, you give these directors this this idea that they're gonna have the freedom, but then when you come in and you're completely, you're not, all the time we see, oh yeah, the executives aren't happy with the cut of the film, and so they're going back and changing things around, like right. How, that how is that creative? How is that helping the heart of and creativity of the director? Like I don't, I don't get it. So I don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, I will say, just from the things I've seen. Uh, Justice League looks is getting brighter and brighter. Anybody notice this? Like yeah. even the even the, the they put out new images, uh, these new posters, and each of the I know posters are ready, and it's, it's only September, right? And it's weird because I was told Bar- that Barry covers. I was like, All right, hmm, got yeah, it. I was told that you know when when we were two weeks out from Wonder Woman that it was normal that it wasn't getting a lot of promotion. It's weird though, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, they have these these color. Uh, posters with each of the characters. I'm like using colors. It's like it, it, it stands out. It pops. It's like I feel like they're they're getting their footing. And whatever yeah. happens with, with Justice League, I'm not gonna hold. Like if Justice League comes out and it's just okay, I'm not gonna hold that against Justice League because I I know that they had they switched directors. They had a lot. They're trying to change here. Um, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, it. 
DC can do this. They they have a good. They right. have the characters to do a really good job. They and, have really interesting characters. Like that was my concern. You know, I was talking with my my coworker the other day. Like that's my big. That's what's so frustrating is that they have really interesting characters and really interesting villains, and they do nothing with it but like shovel up the same nonsense every time. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like the way Fox mistreats the the, the X Men. Yeah, the same thing. Like you you just are treating this property like crap for no reason. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I'm rooting for them, man. I want them to do well. And, um, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We, we, we agree with Justice League. It's like, you know, they're essentially like a boxer trying to change the fighting style mid fight. And maybe they win, maybe they don't. Right. But we're, we're watching it happen in real time when they bring in Josh Whedon to, to sort of direct and there's quote unquote massive reshoots. Uh, so we'll see how it turns out and hopefully they can start to write the course because, there's still a ton of money out there for them to be made. There's still a ton of, a ton of creativity. There's a ton of actors, young and old, who want to be involved in these things and, and, and do a dope project. And, and the great be involved thing, with something yeah. that's iconic. And the, and like the, the Dark Knight is iconic. Right. And like people mm-hmm. are like, people will always be attached to that. Whether it be Michael Jai White or Heath Ledger or whoever. Like there'll be people attached to the Dark Knight because it's such yeah. an iconic film. Yeah, and, and I they think, have an yeah. opportunity to be a part of that. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons why they kept saying that um, one of the, the reasons why they, I wouldn't be surprised at this this whole de-emphasizing the universe and having the uh, the basically I'm called I'm calling them Elseworlds these Elseworld stories <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised that Jeff Johns going yeah because you know what you guys tried to do you know the the Dark Knight Returns and you know the death of Superman in one film like no yeah, in and, one and, film and the Dark Knight Returns it's not in continuity. So it's like you 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 mix continuity. So if you want to do something like that, that's fine. Do it disconnected. You can't build a universe off of Elseworld. You can't. this is what this is one of the things I was trying to get people who were like, well, if they're doing injustice, I'm okay. No, you cannot no. build a universe off of injustice. You cannot do that. You no. cannot build a universe off of that shit. At least not a normal universe. It's going to be a weird universe where the fucking Superman kills Joker. You don't want that shit. Like it's, it's one thing to play in a fucking game or to read in a little Elseworld comic book. You cannot build a universe. You, you cannot do that. It just does not fucking yeah. work. I'm um, going to try to reboot it with Flash. Oh, God. Um, you know, you see it coming. I, I see gonna it use coming. The Flashpoint storyline to reboot their entire universe. I see it coming, and I'm... Yeah, it, yeah. It's, 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 so go to Flashpoint. Because like, that's, oh, that's, that's the whole point of doing. New Batman is. Yeah, because that's the, that's a whole new. That's the whole point of doing Flashpoint is to do. Oh God, yeah. I don't want to. Who about. would you? Okay, so if they recasted Batman, who would you want to see play Batman? So that's the thing, man. I'm not actually 100 percent mad at Affleck as Batman. So I don't oh, know. I like I like him. As yeah, Batman, I don't. I don't they, know. They recast, say he wants out. Who do you bring in? I don't know. But you know what? You, you got to bring somebody in younger. You get somebody. Yep. Get somebody in his 30s. Because I, I think we, we you know this idea of getting a Batman in his forties because get a bat get a get a Batman in his thirties and then get a Tom Holland like uh young young kid who's you know or somebody Stranger. younger or even somebody younger shit get one of the fucking Stranger Kids kids you know yeah. um shit get one of them or one of the kids from it get one of them to play fucking Robin because that's what you need. You know, you need to get. They need to get the ages right. This, this, this thing about what they're doing. They just, they just have not thought this through. They, they haven't thought it through into getting something normal. Like even down to the idea. Like I don't know. It's, I mean, even down to the idea of um, Barry being so much young. Like it's just, yeah. It, uh, yeah. None of it. None of it makes any sense. None of it makes any sense. And um, we'll see. Like I said. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Um. So here's some other bit of news that came out. Um, no, we just want to get your reaction to this. Uh, Quentin Tarantino oh, is open to directing a Star Trek film. Nope. <laughs> I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear nigger in a bunch of alien languages. Because that's what's gonna. That's what's gonna happen. Like he's gonna, gonna, gonna translate down the bottom. Like the uh, the audacity. Could you imagine like someone like it'll his, his movie will definitely have like like a teleport gone wrong and like guts and blood everywhere. Like he's no, you don't let him touch something like Star Trek. Like no, I can't let you can't have Quentin Tarantino doing Star Trek because no. one of the things I, I love about Star Trek, the Star Trek universe is is basically built off of diversity and inclusion and things like that. And that is yep. Quentin Tarantino is not the name. I mean, we make the joke about the nigger stuff, yeah. But just he is not the guy for that. 
That is not yeah, he, within his. That is not like I yeah. like his movies too. I like Quentin Tarantino's movies. They are not the. They are not this. This is not. Yeah. Yeah, his characters are, uh, especially his characters of people of color, are usually very one dimensional, and that's just right. not going to work for Star Trek. He does not have, he doesn't have the range. <laughs> just, put it, just put it bluntly, he doesn't have the range. He does not. He he. And then the thing about it is, he is another one of these uh, uh, male directors who are too big to be told anything, to be told right. that they, hey, yeah, maybe you aren't, you know, the god of this area. And maybe you should to to go to somebody else. He's too big for that. Cause remember, even when he got criticism, like and and I like the movie when he got criticism of uh, Django. Oh, his reaction right. made me go, "God damn it, dude, shut the fuck." Same thing with yeah, um the Hateful Eight. It was just like, was it the Hateful Eight? That is, yeah, yeah, the Hateful Eight. It's just like, dude, your your idea of the struggle is just so bad. Stop. Like, yeah, and you it's, can't it's tell really them bad. it. He, and, he, he, he thinks can't. he's helping. That's the that's the crazy right. part, right? And he thinks he's helping by putting quote unquote putting our stories on the screen. No, you're not. No, no, no. I I, I just no. I do not do that. You are not. That is not. Any, nobody wants to see that shit. Nobody right. who actually likes Star Trek or likes diversity and inclusion stuff is going to want to see that shit. That is a. Could you imagine idea. like the captain having some long monologue on the deck? Because- <laughs> Quintino, Tarantino loves his monologues. Can you imagine that? Well, that's something I think a lot of people monologue. don't understand. Like, directors have styles, right? And certain styles just don't match for anything. And Tarantino's style does not match for this. his style. Actually, works for this is why I like the Hateful Eight because his style does and Jay, his style does work for westerns. Oh, for sure. It works for that. Like, it works for westerns. It works for the the gritty uh, crime drama slash comedy like it works for that kind of stuff it does not work for sci-fi like this yeah that's just not it's just not his it's not his thing and maybe he could surprise us all and show us that i have not seen that in anything he does he has not shown any understanding of that and i just don't see his style working it's just it's just a really it's really bad yeah i yeah. mean and it's, it'd be weird like if, if there are people here who did not like J.J. Abrams doing Star Trek Dude. stuff because it was it reminded me too much of Star Wars. You can you cannot still be you cannot be that person and then go I want to see Tarantino direct Star Trek right right fuck you I want to see a, I want to see a Romulan use racial slurs right. right. I didn't so, what how do you say I can see it now Tarantino on the set of Star Trek going how do you hey somebody look it up how do you say nigger in in Klingon. Yeah, oh, yeah. Damn. So, so in this version, the the, the Borg is basically the clan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like okay, <laughs> right? You're gonna have a white. You turn wearing... the Borg into a white supremacist group, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Not subtle at all. Um, speaking of uh, white men that need to shut the fuck up, um, James Cameron, dude, what is this deal? Uh, so it was back in August, James Cameron came out and was talking about how Wonder Woman wasn't groundbreaking, and um, he doubled down on it. <laughs> Does he think because his because he's had strong? I think he's just jealous. I think it's hundred percent jealousy because he's you know he's had some strong female characters in his films, yeah. and there's another one that's popped up, and he's just like ah. Yeah, no, it's hundred percent what it is. Um, in an interview with the Hollywood Reporter published on Wednesday, Cameron defended his critique of the film, saying that Wonder Woman was good, was a good but not groundbreaking film because of Godot's uh, depiction. I'll stand by that. I mean, she was Miss Israel, and she was wearing. A, a kind of bustier costume that was very form fitting. <laughs> Cameron said, "I mean, again, if I'm reading this, because these are his actual words. I know it sounds like I'm 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 reading something from the Onion, but these are his actual words." Uh, Cameron said, referring to Wonder Woman star Gal Gadot, she's absolutely drop dead gorgeous. To me, that's not groundbreaking. They had Raquel Welch doing stuff like that in the '60s. He added that he was talking about Wonder Woman in the context of Linda Linda Hamilton's portrayal of Sarah Connor. And Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and roll what he says. She sexually uh, says her sexuality was perfectly purposefully downplayed. She wasn't there to be liked or ogled, but she was central, and the audience loved her by the end of the film. He said of Hamilton. Uh, Cameron continued. She, uh, so as much as I applaud Patty directing the film in Hollywood, uh, letting a woman direct a major action franchise, I didn't think there was uh, anything groundbreaking in, in Wonder Woman. Uh, so, the director. So wait, hold on. It gets even better. He's, 
It Does gets it even better. better. Yeah, it gets better. The director added that the issue with female action stars is that they're still marketed to teenage boys. I just think Hollywood doesn't get it about women in, in commercial franchises. He said, drama, they've got that cracked. But the second they start making a big commercial action film, they think they have to ha- to appeal to 18-year-old males or 14-year-old males, whatever it is. I like the fact that uh, Cameron did note that his remark were probably a bit simplistic, but I, added, I like the fact that sexually she had upper hand with her male characters, which I thought was fun. Well, why is his go to sex? Like I didn't walk out of there thinking like I was watching sex on screen with Wonder Woman. So, so my first question is: Has James did James Cameron knew who the fuck Wonder Woman is? No. Like, bruh, like he's he's talking about he's talking about Wonder Woman. As if Patty Jenkins and like created the character of Wonder Woman in like 2017. I'm like, dude, it's fucking Wonder Woman. Yeah. It was around before all the heroines that you quote unquote created were right. in film. Right. It's like the purpose of of, of 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 the character, like, what are you talking about, dude? Like and because you were involved with aliens and Terminator doesn't give you like you don't. You're not sort of like the the czar of female heroism in films. Well, it, you're it, not. Yeah. Well, this is another thing too. Is is it, it, it's the, it's the I'm on your side sexism that we see with racism all the time. It's the well, I created a character who doesn't belong. Who doesn't like when when you see um white people who uh see some of the criticism of some some black uh, characterizations of characters and go well I created a strong black female character who has right. degrees and does this and does this and does this and what they don't realize is that hey you know what well that's great um you can also be a strong black female character or you can be you can be a good black female character without having to be quote unquote strong without quote unquote having to be college educated you don't have to be right. you don't you don't need all those other accolades to be a good character so He's saying that I purposely downplayed the fact that uh, Linda Hamilton's sexuality, so she could be a strong character. So what you're saying is, so if she was, that she did play into her sexuality, she couldn't be a strong character. Because that's yes, the that's the flip side of his what he's saying that exactly. you can only you can only be a good female character if you downplay your sexuality, which he doesn't understand is still playing to men. Right, right. Like, and men, men constantly trying to police women's sexuality is baffling to me. Right, it's baffling. Like, well, why are you trying to police it? Like, let her. If she wants, if they want to put her in a blue dress and she looks fly with that sword, that's and it works for the film. It's not. Here's the thing: this, the quote unquote sexual stuff in the film when she's all dressed up fits with the story. It's not out of context, right? At all. So the idea that it's sort of just out there to make her str- feel like a stronger character is stupid. And 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 just so we're clear. She's dressed like an Amazon warrior. <laughs> like, a warrior, like, bro. Like, like the James Cameron is talking about her. Like she's she's walking around in like you know in armor. Like it's not like they have her strung strung up like Princess Leia in uh, right. the Return of the Jedi. Right? She's not in a bikini. She's she's literally in armor. She's in an armored costume with a shield and a sword. What are you talking about? What are you yeah, talking? Whoop like ass, not like posing for photos. Like like so. So, 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 flip side of this. So, when you have a male character like, say, Hercules, and he has his shirt off and he's running around in a loincloth, are is that not a strong male character now because it's playing to, I guess, women? Which, what, what, what are the rules here? Why, why is the rule only apply to women? Like, it's, it's such a fucking stupid thing. It's like it's not groundbreaking. What the fuck you mean it's not groundbreaking? You had a female, and let's be honest here. Well, I love. Linda Hamilton's character. I I, I right. love the character of Sarah Connor. The attraction in Terminator movies are the fucking Terminator. I am not saying I don't want to downplay like you know Linda Hamilton's character. Like that is a very important lead in these movies, but it's also the Terminator. Like that is also a huge part of this. Because if it was just Sarah, here's the thing: if it was just Sarah Connor with no Terminator. Nobody watches that film. It goes back to the idea of the fact that the the reason why nobody like you have to you you could you, you, you female films aren't allowed to 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 have uh uh the, the these female characters just doing things that other male characters do. You have to put in you you literally had to put in Arnold Schwarzenegger. You right. had to put in a liquid you know a liquid Terminator. Like you had to do all this stuff just to get people into the fucking theater because they couldn't just go for a strong female character. 
that wasn't yeah, watching watching some woman run around who's essentially like conspiracy theorists who thinks robots are going to destroy right. the earth and, and by the watching way, without the robots right and, and and by the way it it wasn't i don't think james cameron did this shit on purpose he didn't turn linda hamilton into a feminist icon on purpose that wasn't your that wasn't your go-to thing it's like trying to say that uh like again going with another one of his films uh um ripley we know right. first of all you didn't create the character ripley um you didn't. That wasn't you. You know, somebody else did that. Uh, and you just carried on that tradition, what they did with it. But even that first Alien film, they they trick you. In, it's halfway through the film before you realize, oh, my God, Sigourney Weaver is the lead of this film. Right. Because you had to do that. You had to downplay it. Same thing with Terminator uh, Judgment Day. You had a bunch of other characters in there. Now, thanks to uh, the betrayal of it and, 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 and honestly, women, um, these women, these female characters have become feminist icons in their own right. But to have James Cameron then come out and use that years later to slam another feminist icon to make it seem like, well, I did it first. Motherfucker, no, you didn't. I the know, fuck, right? The uh, fuck first, you think? I'm, I created the feminist icon. The fuck icon. are you think? Bro, like, me. like the, the audacity and, and, and just like... Ugh. Is there going to be a new feminist icon in his uh, Avatar sequels? Hmm. We're into, all right. Mm-hmm. Probably not. It will just be Sam Worthington in right. blue makeup again. Right. Uh. So Linda Carter, uh, came out. You know, Wonder Woman herself too. Uh. To James Cameron, stop dissing Wonder Woman, you poor soul. Perhaps you don't understand the character. I most certainly do. Like all women, we are more than the sum of our parts. Your thuggish jabs at a brilliant director, Patty Jenkins, are ill-advised. This movie was spot on. Gal Gadot was great. I know Mr. Cameron because I have embodied this character for more than 40 years, so stop it. Hmm. Well said. Yeah. Just well stop. said. Just stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what the... F- like, this... The- it, it, it it's just it, it's pure jealousy. It's pure oh, jealousy. One hundred percent jealousy. It's pure jealousy. Like and and because he's James Cameron, he gets away from it, and people let, let him get away with it because he's James fucking Cameron. But it's th- this is literally one of the most disgusting things I've seen in a long time. It is so fucking disgusting seeing this white man here get so angry and so you know upset because we were saying Warner Woman was groundbreaking. Yeah, motherfuckers, groundbreaking. It's made the it most. It's the most. It's made. It's made mo- the most money out of this DC universe they created than any other fucking film. It is the first time in forever that we ever had a, a a female superhero character do do that well critically and financially. Um, yes, it's groundbreaking. Yes, it's important. You know, and and here's the thing. Unlike Terminator Two, the movie is explicitly about her. Right. Like, huh? It's her journey. It's her journey, you know. Like, I love Terminator Two. It's not really Sarah Connor's journey. Nah. No, it's not. No, like it. It should be, but even then, after every film after that, Connor ignores her. I think they're bringing her back for the next. But it's like, mm. oh god. But like, mm. like, yeah, he's like this motherfucker's over here trying to relive his his fucking past. He's still making these four fucking Avatar films, and he's bringing. Doing the next Terminator film, I think Terminator Six now. That's not gonna, it's gonna be the direct sequel to Terminator. Like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, go. Just so fucking annoying, y'all. It, it just, you know, he says he. she uh, this is uh, Cameron. She's an objectified icon, and it's just ho- a male Hollywood doing the same old thing. Like the audacity to say that shit. <laughs> this guy. Like the like the what audacity. A- She's an adi- like you have no idea what you're talking about. You like he's literally tell when when you say that you're literally telling me you do not understand Wonder Woman. Yeah, and and then he's, he's really just jealous. Yeah, and he does not. He's he's like a petulant child acting out because they're jealous about something. Yeah, he's, just, he's, he's, he's a hundred percent, hundred percent irrational and ignoring you know how many years of Wonder Woman we've had in this in our in our culture, yeah. a culture that he's a part of. I, I'm I'm convinced I'm convinced he didn't I'm convinced he didn't watch the movie. Oh, I'm sure. convinced. He, I'm convinced he did. Cause there's no. Cause I'm. I'm. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, yo. So when was he objectified? When? You know? Yeah. Do you. I mean, yeah, like cause, you, cause her, her choice to have sex is her choice in the movie, right? And, and, they don't, and they don't show it. It's not a sex scene. They don't show it. They don't show no. it. Um, 
Her outfit. He tried, to, he, tried, he tried to jab her a couple times, a little sex joke on the boat. She's like, you know, I understand it. It's just stupid. Right. So, you know, she's she has upper hand in every situation that's quote unquote sexual and it's fine. It's that's dumb. That's a dumb thing. It, it, he is someone who probably didn't see the film because that's a dumb thing to say. Yeah. I mean, like you're, you're, you're mad about her outfit, but literally we had a film like 300. When the men, oh, the, the men literally fought with no shirts on <laughs> and loincloth. Like, so why, why is it that she's in, she's literally in battle. It's not like, she, again, she's in battle gear, carrying a sword and a shield. And you're like, oh, well, you know, she's throwing some thigh here. So what is she supposed to be? What are you, what are you? Yeah. This is how you, this is how, this is how you dress. And that, like, this is, this is how, I don't, under, I don't understand. Like, I don't. It's it's such it's so annoying to me. And here's the thing: I think James Cameron is a is a great film director. Oh, he's good. He's a he's, he's a good he's, at his job. He's a good a good film director. Stay stay at your fucking job. Stop talking about other shit. Stop stop commenting on other people's movies. Stop being fucking petty and jealous. Shut yeah, stop hating from outside the club, man. And just make your hey. Avatar movie and keep it moving. Yeah, you're eighty fucking. Oh Avatar. wait, his his Star Wars hate's gonna come because he's that's go that's his big competitor, man. So he's gonna have a lot of oh yeah hate, we hate her comments about Ray and the direction of the new Star Wars and mm-hmm. yeah. I'm wondering, did he get? Do, uh, I gotta see if he did that. I think he might have. Oh, it's com- if he hasn't done it already, it's coming because that's his big competitor. Because one of these movies is gonna it's gonna bump him from having the top grosser movie of all time. I know he did because I remember this. He did say something about it because um, that was the first time I realized it's like, oh, James Cameron really could he? And not the first time because you know what? I forgot when Avatar came out. He was also because isn't his um ex uh, Catherine Be- Bigelow? Yep. Yeah, he was he was petty. He was he was petty during that year that Avatar came out because Catherine Bigelow and him were both up for um Best Picture, and she won. She I think for, she won for Hurt Locker. And he was petty then. So he's always kind of been this petty, misogynistic asshole. Uh, but yes, um, he said that uh, Force Awakens lacked, lacked imagination of Star Wars prequel, prequels. <laughs> of course it did. Of course it did. Because mm-hmm. you don't want to look up one day and your little your little throne of having the, the number one movie of all time is going to be not there anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that and the fact that he also wants to, like, he's just, it's just, it just, it just petty. He's a petty misogynistic asshole who's actually good at his job, uh, but he's still a petty misogynistic asshole. Fuck James Cameron. Yeah. So, um, another person needs to shit who I respect, uh, who I like movies I like, but I think needs to shut the fuck up. Uh, Super League politically correct society is the death of comedy. Warns veteran comedian Mel Brooks. What? Yeah, um, Brooks is known for his uh, plethora of uh, acclaimed comedy movies. And political correctness was among a stranglehold on comedians. It's not good for comedy. Comedy has a has to walk a thin line, take risks, he said. Comedy is the lecherous little elf whispering in the king's ear, always telling the truth about human behavior. The producer said that his iconic Western parody, Blazing Saddles, could not be made in today's political com- uh, climate. The 1964 comedy Western featuring uh, Cleveland Little and Jen, uh, Gene Wilder featured a black sheriff in a racist town. Brooks said that it was it was the racial prejudice prejudice portrayed within the film that was a me- mechanism behind its cultural significance. Without the movie would uh, without that the movie would not have had nearly the significance, the force, the di- 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 uh, the, the dynamics, and the stakes that were that were contained in it. He said, um, the director said he could find comedy in almost anything, uh, in almost everything. So here, I hate when the people say this, and I'm maybe I'm talking it up, and maybe he. He thinks uh, political correctness is, is something totally different. Um, okay. Because this doesn't make any sense. Because then he later goes on to say that there are lines. He's a I person would never touch the, touch the gas chambers or the death of children or Jews in the hands of Nazis, he told BBC Radio. But everything else is okay. Well, no. So what you just said is political correctness, technically. Oh, for sure. There's certain so, things you won't touch because it's right. important to you. Yeah, so that is political correctness. So, so you're the death of comedy. <laughs> like it doesn't I, I hate this. I I hate this argument. I hate this argument. Can I, I saw people when this came out, people going, Was well, he right? And I think he's true and telling the truth. And I'm like, No, he's not. No. That, like no. Like anybody who thinks this hasn't actually thought what this means. Show me where political correctness has killed comedy. It it's killed bad comics who do mm. hacky jokes. Mm. Comics that have not grown 
and are using the yeah. same material, old material they use decades ago, and they're trying to repackage package it and haven't grown as 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 forget just as comics, they haven't grown as individuals. Um, right. yeah, it kills them. Like, like, for, like, like for instance, you know, we we're doing this podcast the other day, uh, we were talking about eighties movies, and we watched Fright Night and the original Fright Night from like eighty five, eighty three, or whatever. And the, the 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 evil Eddie character keeps calling the main character a fruitcake, mm-hmm. and it's cringeworthy. Mm-hmm. It's all these sort of references to like they think the they think the vampire and his and his his sort of vampire helper dude is are gay, and it's all sort of cringeworthy. Now, fast forward to the reboot they did in 2011, and none of that's in there, and it's the same movie. You just, mm-hmm. They just took all of that out. Mm-hmm. Hey, guess what? You can take all of this sort of homophobic humor out of the film, and it doesn't lose an, an ounce of what it's supposed to be. So you can take that stuff out. You don't need to do that. The punchline, you can tell a gay joke, right? But the punchline can't be, and the person's gay. That well, can't be the punchline. Well, or, that was, and the person's black. Yeah. Well, that was the thing that, was the thing, that, was the thing that Uri kind of made it pop. Talking about when uh, Dave Chappelle had the you know was, you know accused of transphobia, not accused. He, he, was, he made transphobic jokes. It's like in that joke, the punchline is you're you're punching down. You're punching down at yeah. transgender uh, individuals, not the people who are afraid of. Tra- it's like that's all you got to do. Like a good comedian knows to turn the target away from. You know, the marginalized. Like, okay, no, I shouldn't be making fun of transgender people and making that the joke. I should be making fun of the people who are afraid of transgender people. It's that simple. You change yep. the target, you can make that joke. People go, oh, I can't joke about homophobia. No, you can definitely joke about that stuff. You can make gay jokes. You can make transgender jokes. But the punchline can't be at the expense of the marginalized at that point. Yeah, and like, it's never been like, there. I, I don't know if you saw The Big Sick. No. There's a there's a really funny 9/11 joke in that movie. It's mm-hmm. hilarious, bro. Again, but they again, I think what Kamel now Johnny does is he like you said, he changes the target and that's what makes it funny and that's why people were like in tears laughing at the joke. So you can make a joke about literally make a joke about 9/11 in a movie and it'd be funny. You just have to craft it well. Um I can't remember which album it's on, but Bill Burr has this this part where he's he makes a, a Hitler joke, right? And, he's, and, he, and he just he, he the seg, the so, segue into it is so fucking hilarious because it cuts the it catches the audience all guard. He goes, "Cause that's the funny thing about Hitler," and everybody just goes, "What are you doing?" He's like, yeah. "No, no, no, hear me out." And he was like, he, and the joke was about how um how with the Berlin Olympics, how you know he Hitler thought that they were the master race. And he was like, "Well, kind of do we kind of already did that when we kind of enslaved a group of people for four hundred years and then turned them like it was." It's a funny joke because he makes the joke about how stupid Hitler seemed and how upset he was that they, 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 they lost to a black guy. Like yeah. that's funny. You can make that joke, right? You can't. Like, it, so you can, anything can be funny as long as you. You 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 are good enough to do that. This idea that and again, that's why I'm thinking maybe Mel Brooks at his old age doesn't understand what we're talking about when it comes to political correctness. Because what happens is, I've seen too many people like go to this PC thing um, on both sides, and I'm thinking like I don't think you guys you guys are saying the same thing, but it doesn't mean the same thing. So no. like. The reason why some of Mel Brooks' comedy works back then was because, yeah, you were using, you know, Blazing Saddles to talk about, you know, race. You were talking about the ridiculousness of racism. You were doing that, right? Uh, People would consider that PC. The reason why it wouldn't get made today is because, yes, people would call it too PC because white people would be like, well, wait, what is racism? What what is that? Like, right? That's what th- that's what that is. Like this idea is it's not what people think it is. You know, it's it's not what you think. It, and it, and it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be us being concerned about these jokes in the film. It would be white people being concerned that their racism sort of being put out there on front street. Right. Like my problem, my problem with Bill Maher and his whole thing about PC culture is his target is always people that are that are the marginalized. Like you're always you're always going at oh well you know Native Americans are mad about the name of uh, or liberals are mad at the name of these 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 football teams nobody cares and here's why I'm like yeah Native Americans are they do not like that shit that right. is why we make it a big deal because you're literally punching down at the victims you're you're victim yeah. blaming you're looking at the victims yeah, going it, why are you complaining 
Yeah, and, and the yada yada, like the fact that like stereotypes about trans people get them harmed, stereotypes right. about black people get them killed, stereotypes right. about women get them attacked. Like that's the thing you can't yada yada, right? It's a joke, but it it, it plays to a stereotype that literally harms people. Literally gets people killed. Literally gets right. people killed. That's not PC culture. That's called being a decent human being. You know, PC culture is you know football players kneeling during the anthem and. You getting upset? Oh, they're hating America. Th- that's PC culture. Yeah. That's the real PC culture where you're getting people right. upset over things that literally are not a big deal. No, a peaceful protest. A peaceful protest. That's PC uh, culture. That, you know, that, that has nothing to do with the flag, and you bring it up as if it's to, to right. do with the flag. Right. That's PC. Yeah. So now, if Mel Brooks's whole thing is what's wrong with comedy is that kind of PC culture where you cannot call out, you know you know, inequality, you cannot protest, you cannot, then yeah, I will agree with you. But the way I think he's using it here, or the way that it will be be taken by certain people, it is not correct. Like, because it doesn't make sense. I can point to how, Girls Trip made $100 million. Right. Not PC, you know. Sausage Party. <laughs> Come on, dog. Like, yeah. Phenom reminded me of that. Sausage Party. Sausage Party is hilarious. And it is not PC. That is not, not a PC. Not at all. That is not a PC animated movie. South Park is still going on, right? You know, Legends of Chamberlain Heights somehow is somehow floating on the radar on Twitter. I do not know Rick how and, that show Rick gets Morty. Rick and Morty, the entire uh, Adult Swim lineup. Right. Squidbillies is coming back. <laughs> Squidbillies is coming. Right. That's my show. Squid. The Squids are coming back. Like, what, what? What are we talking about here? Like, to me, it seems like the only time we see people getting upset uh, about this stuff are comedians who haven't gotten with the time who don't want to change and that's not pc culture that's you being in in, in, in stuck in your old ways you're not wanting to grow it goes back to what we were saying about people who don't you know get older and don't want, and want to unlearn all the stuff they learn as a kid it's like whoa wait wait a minute wait a minute you know common decency you know you got to keep learning got to keep adjusting you're still telling the same old transphobic jokes that yeah you're right 10 20 years ago you got away with it now we're right. better than that right. you know we realize, and we realize that that language harms people, mm-hmm. like legitimately, like not even like a joke. Like it, it literally has has an effect. When you watch that dude get shot uh, from the helicopter in Oklahoma, or whatever, and the guy says that's a bad dude, that mm-hmm. comes from stereotypes and jokes about black people being criminals, and like that's how he can look from five hundred feet above and say he's a bad person or a bad dude. Like that's how it harms people. That's girl I... getting shot. That's I don't. I don't have the link on it, but I saw it. There was a story about how a young, um, a, uh, a a a a young. I think it was a young young boy uh, was arrested for stabbing another um, another uh, another student, and they were basically. Uh, I think the, the thing was he stabbed and killed somebody, but uh, he was getting called faggot. He was gay, and he well. got he was getting he was getting bullied, and I'm like <sighs> again. Real life consequences, guys. When when you when you just oh, it's just jokes. Like think about how many times you've seen people go, oh well, you know, yeah, sure, I'm wearing, the, I have the Nazi yeah. me- memorabilia, and I'm doing all this stuff. I'm laughing at the Nazi stuff, but it's not real. It's just it's just like ironic. No, it's not right. being ironic. Right? It's not. Yeah. A, it's not being ironic. It's not. That's not PC culture. Us saying that you wearing Nazi stuff makes you a Nazi and makes you hateful, makes you racist. That's not PC. Because because here's the thing, it's not funny. That's that's the thing too. It's not funny. It's just not like it's not funny anymore. Yeah, it was, no, it probably, no. and some of the stuff was never funny to begin with, you know. And a lot of the stuff that we thought was funny was never funny to the the victims of the stuff anyway. And so it's when you become more aware, to the right? It was never funny to the victims. So now and, you and become that's why more aware. Bruce could have that whole caveat about Nazis and and Jews being like right. something he will he'll never do because it's right. never going to be funny to him, right? So and, and and that's the thing. It's like so when you say that stuff, when you say, "Oh, well, all this other stuff is on, everything else is fine," but this, well, why, 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 why is all of a sudden the Jews and Nazis stuff not? Oh, because you're Jewish and that also affects you, and now you understand how that. So then, what you're saying is, um, it's not PC culture. It's about being a decent human being. Right. You know. So oh, I get it now. Like, it, like again, that, that and that's why I think that his yeah, it, it's really weird. Like I. I yeah, that that whole thing about like when when I originally saw his comments, it kind of it, it kind of pissed me off. But then when I when I was putting the show notes together for this stuff, and I saw that he said, "Well, you know, jokes about Nazis and killing Jews and stuff like that." That's a little across the line. I'm like, <laughs> "Wait a minute, dude! Come on, how? 
It, it, Cause here's the thing. If, 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 if PC culture is ruining everything, then, then there is no, well, this is off limits. Right. Then that, then there's, there are no limits. And so what you're saying, uh, Oh, well, I would never make fun. Well, why not? Well, cause it's not funny. Well, no, you just said that there are no limits. And it's ruining. So what you're doing, tell me right now, you're already limiting yourself. You're already limiting your comedy because you're already taking something, something off the table. So that can't be the rule there. So yeah, it's just fucking bullshit, fucking bullshit. So, um, uh, you know what? Kyle mentioned him. Let's go ahead and do this one right now too. Cause I, I was I gonna make it this a, you know what? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do. I'm uh, hold on. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and make this a great moments of white privilege. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Cause I wasn't gonna do a great moment to wipe for the day, but we're gonna we're gonna do win the day. Get it out there. Get this out there. So great moments on white privilege. Um, Bill Maher takes a knee. Whoa! I did not see this. Then defends Nazis against Nazi punchers. <laughs> all right. On Friday night, Bill Maher began the latest edition of Real Time by taking a knee. Before we start the show, let's all take a knee, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Miller announced, announced to his studio audience before going down on a knee. It was told to be, uh, it was to, truth be told, a rather cringeworthy display of solidarity with uh, Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I can't stand him. No, I can't either. I, 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 I fucking hate. I, actually, I, I fucking hate Bill Maher. He, he's racist. Oh shit. Yes, yes, yes. He's also a great moments on my privilege. Um, no, I can't stand. I can't stand Bill Maher because. He's another one of those people, those those, those PC war, uh, PC culture is ruining America, people, um, and it's ridiculous, because he's also the same guy. Uh, this is take, well, I'm taking knee in solidarity, but then I was also defending that you shouldn't punch Nazis because, uh, you know, it's wrong in First Amendment rights and blah 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 blah. It's it's <clears throat> so, yeah, he's a, he tried to play both sides. No, he definitely is. He definitely yeah. is. Let's see if I can find this. Here we go. I'm trying to find that. I'm going to play the video. I didn't have it set up before. I'm actually going to play the video so you can see how fucking bad this is. But, um, yeah. First of all, if you fuck with Bill Maher, you don't fuck with me. I'm throwing it out there yeah. now because, no, I, I had not forgotten. Like, he's done so much horrible shit. And he's been such a horrible person. He just is. Right. So this is not about, oh, well, he makes fun of everybody. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. Not no. the same. He doesn't do it the same as everybody. Here we go. Hold on. I'm going to share this with you so you can see it. So you can see how terrible uh, this is. <laughs> do I want to see this? No, you really don't. But uh, I can't look at it by myself. So um, here we go. All right. First of all, before we start the show, uh, let's all take a knee. Shall we? Like He gave a fucking thumbs up. He gave a fucking thumbs up when he did it. Was he being ironic? I, I, I don't. This? I don't know. I, I think so because there's no way. There's no way in, in hell. Like, it, first of all, even if you are being ironic, to do that when we know that the the purpose of the the the, the, the protest is to protest inequality. Like I was saying, um, uh, there there was a tweet that kind of made it seem like Democrats were were making it about Trump, mm -hmm. but really what what it really was was there were two black. Uh, Congress uh, men, uh, one a woman and one a man, took knees on on the the on the floor, but yeah. they brought up that it was about inequality. It was about police brutality, and they brought up the reason for it. it wasn't just to to take a knee to, against Trump. Like everybody, this is why it's a great moment in white privilege because people are trying to. And again, I think Deepon will go more into this. Uh, but we were trying to change the dynamic of what this protest is about. It was never about Trump. Never. It was it always about, about Trump. It's always about police brutality. Always about inequality. It was always about that. It's never about Trump. Yeah. You know, and, and watching white people turn this into the fucking ice bucket challenge by taking a fucking right. knee against Trump. Fuck you. You're, you're fucking yeah. gentrifying a goddamn protest. Where's the line? Like, where do you have a fucking line? At this point, it was so fucking disgusting. Watching people, I'm going to take a knee. What the fuck? It's because you know, they don't care enough about police brutality and racial injustice. It's a new safety pin. Yeah, they don't oh. care enough about that. No, you don't. Huh. I'll, I'll, I'll take a knee against Trump. Yes. Ah, yes. Donald Trump is now officially the drunk at the end of the bar. 
<laughs> bitching about football. And, you know, this, this is the world that we live in now. The stupidest asshole alive says something... <laughs> So something ignorant every three days, and we have to debate it. Uh, this just in, the president has just tweeted that uh, dogs are gay <laughs> and Chinese people spit in the laundry. Discuss, America. <laughs> so, O.J. Simpson is getting out of jail next week, and he's a football player that Trump likes because he never took a... Oh, God. So, um, I don't know where the part is, but he, uh, I'll, I'll read it here. Uh, when people saw him, oh, so I think he went into later on uh, to talk about the First Amendment protecting hate speech. So they're talking about the guy in Seattle who got punched. You saw that video, the guy in the Nazi in Seattle that got punched, was walking around with a Nazi. Okay, I mean, let me tell you something about that. You know, I, I live in Seattle, right? Mm -hmm. He was going out to get punched. The, the 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 section where he was at downtown is just a bunch of niggas hanging out. <laughs> it's it's like nigga central, bro. Like yeah. everybody knows that McDonald's. This in the it's in the background. Everybody knows, like, so you you walk around there is like you trying to get punched. It's like a woman walking around there is like I'm finna get catcalled. So so be something to happen. So so it's like you you it, it it's like my man from uh 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 uh, uh um what is, oh god why am I forgetting it? It was what movie was that? It was uh, Bruce Willis and what was it? Die Hard. Die Hard 4. Die Hard, yeah, when, when he was walking around with the, the, the nigger yeah, sign. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's what he was doing, yo. He, he put him on that corner because he knew it was going to be some shit. And that's exactly what that dude, you know. There's plenty of places to walk. Like, two blocks east is like a Nordstrom and like a, a, a mall and all this stuff. <laughs> you can go and you can do all that and probably wouldn't be no funk. Yeah, he went, that, he went to that corner because he knew it was going to be some smoke if he went there. And it was. <laughs> Um, so when people saw him there on the bus, it went around the internet and some good Samaritan, according to some people went out and punched him out and it got raved. It got a lot of rays by liberals and liberals should not be raving about this. We have the first amendment. I don't like Nazis either. I rooted against them on Hogan's heroes, but we have to go by principles and not feelings. That's what the other side does. You can't just punch Nazis argued Mar. Uh, why can't you? Yeah. Fuck that. Let me see if I can find this. I got it. This break is going to make America great except fuel. To drain the swamp. Emma, uh, Judge Roy Moore won the report. Uh. <laughs> so we can't expect him to be caught at a... Unveiled his tax plan. No. Uh. It's terrific. Maybe it's not in here. All right. So I can't see it. it but but the idea that, yeah. like, someone who's a Nazi somehow has just a different of opinion, like, I prefer Coke over Pepsi instead of, like, right. actual <laughs> violence is in their doctrine. Like... Oh, you you have will Coke have Pepsi. Pepsi. You will have Pepsi, not Coke. Yeah. This is, we're going to war. Right now. Like, come on. Yeah. What the fuck? What is wrong with you? Like, this is not. Some of this was. Uh, we don't believe in the in, in Supreme Court. He continued. The Supreme Court said Nazis can march, uh, march, and we just saw they were allowed to march in Charlottesville. This is what the First Amendment says. Even if something is odious, this is America. You're allowed to express it. If you throw the principle out the window and just say it's how I feel, then you're just as bad as them. Like again, this no, is just. No, no one's trying to stop them from marching. That's not what's happening. It's just, that is just, uh, yeah, it wasn't in the, apparently it was later on in another part where he actually went into the thing about the Nazi. But yeah, it's just, that's not how that works. Like you said, it goes down to this idea that him, I hate when people do this, like that racism, people keep trying to act like racism and bigotry is absent of violence. Exactly. And it's not. Or, like, and it's not harmful. And it's not harmful. Like, it is not. It is a. It is a definite threat. A guy walking around with a Nazi armband for a, a, a the Nazi. What are the Nazis known for? They are known for killing six million Jews. Right. Nobody talks about the good things the Nazi did. Why? Because there were six million Jews. Mass genocide that they <laughs> killed. That is the yeah. thing. So you cannot walk around. So when you walk around with a Nazi armband, what you're telling me is you are pro genocide. It's violence. Like, like if I if I walked around with an ISIS armband on and some patriot dude punched me, would I be getting? We would be defending my right to wear an ISIS armband downtown Seattle. But no. But, but but that's the funny thing, right? That's that's the funny thing about patriotism. The funny thing about patriotism in America is it's okay if it's white people. Oh yeah. Because that, that's because, that's 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 funny. Is that that's under the great ones, great moments in white privilege history. Right. Because the greatest white privilege. Is doing whatever you want with zero consequence. 
Right. Because that is the great. Oh, you said you. I've seen them. I remember there were there were like Pride Parade and there was some stuff for like Black Lives Matters where uh, conservatives were were photoshopping in and passing around fake images that showed ISIS flags at those events. Right. And so, if we're gonna use the the logic that Bill Maher and um, these others use, then what's the problem? What is the problem? Because again, they were false. They were, it was it was completely false, and the, the, there wasn't ISIS flags being waved at these events. But what if they were? Right. Because if we're gonna say that wearing a Nazi armband is fine, if you're gonna say that waving a Confederate flag is fine, then therefore waving an ISIS flag is also fine. If I were to put an ISIS flag on, on, on the front of my house, I wh- what? what? What's the problem? You cannot like it, but there's nothing you should be able to do about it. But that's not what's going to happen, right? I then get on a watch list. Right. I get on a watch list. I get I get run out of town. I get threatened with violence. And that's okay. And that's okay. And I guarantee you that even Bill Maher himself would, would say it's okay and would back it. You know? Because he's he also Muslims. He, he, he's Muslims, so yeah. and, and, and like th- and that's the, that that is the, the the funny thing about this this fake attempt at patriotism, which you know, kind of leads to my next segment. It's just I'm amazed at, 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 that we've gotten to this point. Oh yeah, because I remember I'm old enough. I'm old enough to remember before nine eleven. Yep, and before nine eleven, <laughs> all this patriotism shit didn't happen. No, all <laughs> these. Uh, uh, it was like perf- it, the performed patriotism didn't. Happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and weird thing about it is cause I, I was seeing the thing going around. And I think um, from this last show, about the thing about going around about you know you know the, what the uh, the the rules are for properly displaying a flag and how uh, right. half the things we do now is just all that stuff really came out after nine eleven because there was way I I noticed I, I used to notice is that. There was way more understanding of, of what to do and how to display a flag versus what it is after 9-11. After 9-11, you started getting things like, you know, super patriot. Everybody becomes a super super patriot. You know, right. um, everybody had the napkins, the, 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 the sporting events were all... Because, you know, the, the first games after 9-11 were, especially in New York, were super patriotic, right? You had to do this. And it just stayed since that point, and we haven't undone it. No. But it's like... It's not real. Like it, this has all been performative. It's like now you get now you go out there, you see everybody got the I support the troops. I remember the I support the troops thing. You know where that came from? It came from George W. Bush. Right. Came out under George W. Bush when 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 people started started questioning his decision making and in going into places like Iraq. Yeah, because no one wanted another Vietnam. Yeah, nobody wanted to, nobody wanted another Vietnam. So we were going, hey, um, all right, cool. Like you went into Afghanistan. We understand that because we did get attacked. So, mm, all right, cool, that's fine. But you're talking about Iraq right now, and um, we kind of don't want to go into Iraq because that doesn't seem cool. What, you don't support the troops? Oh, you're you're either with us, or you're against us. You know, you know, real Americans. Like it became that. That's where that came from. Remember, um, Freedom Fries. Yep. When France didn't want to back us going into Iraq, and so uh, there was a couple of senators or uh, House Republicans who went out there and wanted to rename French fries to Freedom Fries, and were pouring out French wine. Yeah. Yeah. All that shit happened. Yeah. Like it's fake patriotism. Like all of this shit we see now, all the super patriotic shit we see now, the slogans we see. This is not normal shit. This is not yeah. shit that came out, you know, years ago. No, this is within the last two decades. Oh, it's, Maybe it's normal. It's just, it's just normal in North Korea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've been telling people who are complaining about people not wanting to stand for the anthem. I was like, if you want to go someplace that makes you stand for everything, go to North Korea. They'll make you do all of it. But isn't that the other, other funny fucking thing, right? So right. talk about you know you know what what North Koreans make themselves do. Um, telling people every, go back to Africa. Every, yeah, every, every day. Every day, your kids go to school, and they're forced to stand. And pledge allegiance to a fucking flag. What the fuck are we talking about, guys? Right. We can't. We don't have any room to talk about anybody else. Our no. kids go to school, and you put your hand on your heart, and you pledge allegiance to a goddamn flag. Right. It makes no fucking sense. No sense. You're, it's forced patriotism. Yeah. Before you even learn what the country's about. Yeah. You're doing it. 
before you even learn what the country is about, you're taught to stand up and respect the flag. How is that any different? Because here's the thing. If you didn't decide you don't want to do it, you get in trouble. Right. Oh, for sure. You know? And not just the athlete, the kid. Every, like, there's there's news now about, you know, I'm not trying to get into all the sports stuff, but I was, apparently there's a, there's a high school out in, maybe it was Texas, that kicked two kids off the, the football team because they decided to kneel for the for the anthem. Yeah. You're punishing people for exercising the freedom that you say right. make this country so great. Right. So... Okay. So we, we look right. at yeah we, we look at we, we, we look at things like North Korea and say oh well they're forcing this he's forcing patriotism right. he's forcing people to obey how is that Korean any law different is so dangerous yeah. oh god how is that any different from what you're doing here you're basically right. telling these football players hey they make a lot of money they got to stand up and respect the flag you tell your kids they got to stand up and respect the flag you have ki- like if it was just it, like people making it was like just about money well now you have kids on a high school team who are not making any money. And you're telling them if they don't do it, if they don't respect them, again, respect a piece of cloth. Right. The, the, the fuck? You know? To be honest, I'm going to make a confession here on your show. I'm kind of okay with the go back to Africa people. Because <laughs> I want to find a white person who's going to pay for my vacation to Africa. Hey. So I want to find someone who's legit serious about sending me back to Africa. <laughs> Who's serious about it? And like fun, I want to go to Johannesburg. Yo, I want to go to Cape Town. Yo, like, you, yeah. You know what you got to do? I'll put together a uh, uh, a GoFundMe or yeah. a PayPal link. And next time somebody tells you to go to Africa, just say, would you, would you care to donate? Yeah. <laughs> send me back to Africa. <laughs> send, me back. A, I, send me back. Send me back. Send me back to Africa. There you go. Send me back to Africa, GoFundMe. And, I, and you know, then I'll, I'll find my way back home. But yeah, I'm all for it. They want to send everyone back. I'm down. Yeah, it, it it's it's just a weird, it's just this weird 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 thing, man. It's just we're so fucking stupid. Like again, you know, uh, the um, whole thing with uh, Hurricane Maria and hitting Puerto Rico, right? Right. You know, seeing the crazy thing that Trump's saying. But what struck me is this: like, I can go in on the Trump thing, you know, and that's obviously bad in him going at the mayor of all people who like. There's an image of the mayor literally waiting in water to help somebody. Right. While Trump is at a golf course, like it, enough said, right? But here's one thing that got kind of gets me, and um, I don't blame people for doing this. Like people who are doing this, I I I don't blame them because I think they have to do this to try to get the support. But it's been kind of sad seeing that in order to elicit basic empathy from Americans, we have to point out that Puerto Ricans are Americans too. Oh, do you know like, people who don't know? Well, yeah, I mean, it, well, it's, 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 it's like there's definitely the, like the people that don't know, but it's sad that you even have to do that, and not not the fact that they're American, but it's like, what if they weren't Americans? Right. Like it's literally a, 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 a an entire country without power. The entire country is running on generators right entire now. Entire country, yeah. Like, and also, who, you know, it's, and you're seeing people like Delta and like these cruise lines, like making sure stuff gets there, and our government is sort of twiddling their thumbs. Acting like they don't know what they're going to do. Right. Um, but like, it's, you know, yeah. again, it happens to be brown people who are the ones affected and there's been slow movement. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. It's just like, but to me, All it's right. like the the idea that you, that you, well, no, I'm one of you. Uh, we're Americans too. You got to help us. Like, but what if they weren't? If they weren't American, it's still a nation that honestly, a lot of you like going to for vacation. Man. But when it's time to actually help out and, 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 and do the right thing, we're we're we'll we'll get back to you, and <laughs> we'll, we'll your your call is important to us. We will be answered in the order in which it was right. received. Like we're really giving them the emer- the you know the 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 customer service line number. Like it is just so. Our, I think I think you know we're spending so much time talking about Trump and and everything going on here. I don't think people realize the real problem we have in America are the people. Yep. This is the thing that I don't think so many people understand. It's the people. You have people who at this point like so uh one of the things people wonder why sometimes I watch Morning Joe. And the reason why I watch Morning Joe is because Morning Joe is the perfect show to watch when you want to actually get a good uh uh, uh when you want to when you want really want to see what the average white American who is clueless thinks right because fox news they're over the fucking top right 
Fox News right. is over the top. And and honestly, while they definitely have their issues, CNN still has, for the most part, some really good. Uh, they, they'll 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 hit hard in the morning. They they'll get they'll, they'll ask the right question. Morning Joe, right. though, you get you get the un the unfiltered thoughts right. of your average white person because and, and and they think they're helping. And so one of the things I, I saw this week was, well, you know the the president is wrong for, you know, striking out at the the NFL. You know the athletes is wrong. It looks bad. Blah blah. You know, but they always kept bringing up. But he is like he needs to just let it go because he is on the right side of America. Because you know, like sixty percent of Americans agree that the players should stand for the for the anthem. Right. And I'm like, those sixty percent of people are also wrong. Like they're wrong. Like wrong. They're wrong. It's just wrong. Like that. Yeah. Like and and so the problem comes down to when you watch Morning Joe is you realize that they're swayed by what the polls of the majority of Americans say. And at no point do they ever go, well, shit, the majority of Americans also approved of slavery at one point. Right. The majority of Americans shouldn't always be the 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 decider on moral issues. Right. Because we've and, already... And your, and your idea of morality is literally just a matter of dates, Right. right. I was watching this documentary called uh, The Trials of Muhammad Ali, and it opens with this scene of Muhammad Ali just getting ripped in this interview, man. This guy just like, oh, Ali's a criminal. He's the, you know, he, he's, he's disgraced and all these things about him. And it cuts to Ali getting a Medal of Honor mm-hmm. from George Bush. And he's being praised for his his politics and his protests, right? It just took a matter of decades, and now everyone's on, everyone's, you saw all those pieces people wrote about Ali when he died? Mm-hmm. And they hated this man at the time. They hated him. Mm-hmm. They hated him. What's the same thing happened with, 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 with MLK? Oh, yes, uh, we MLK. need, we need, we need to go back to the time of MLK. Like y'all, y'all motherfuckers yeah. do not like him. People talk about MLK like he died of old age. Yeah, in like, his early thirties, and got murdered. The majority of the ma- the majority of all Colin Kaepernick did was kneel. During, he actually met with an with a, I believe an army ranger who said, "Hey, yep. let's, you know, you, you, this is your sitting is kind of affecting me this way. But if you kneel, I think it still respects the flag, but also brings attention to the thing you're saying." So Colin Kaepernick goes, "All right, cool. I'm gonna kneel then. I'm gonna do that." Hey, here's the, th- the the thing that was always bothering me about this is Colin Kaepernick did what everybody else who was going at him or going at these players didn't do. He listened. He was like, oh, okay, cool. I, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I don't want anybody to think that I'm disrespecting the flag the anthem, or, or, or our troops or anything like that. So I listened to somebody. He said, I should kneel and said, so I kneeled. He did that. Right. And then whenever he a- was asked, he told you what the real reason was, and people were still fucking mad. Oh, he's trying still to disagree. He's still trying. No, no. He's already said he didn't. He listened. He did this, this, and this, and this. You don't really care. It's not no, about, because it's, it's not a, it's not about, <sighs> That, that, and, and, and that's when it hits me. It's like the majority of these people are wrong and don't care to be right. No. So why are we listening to them? If the majority of Americans said they want to bring back slavery, should we then go with them? Or are we going to go, oh, whoa, no, no, that's wrong. Like, so right. where's the line? At, so whenever I hear people go, well, you know, the majority of Americans, you know, side with the president on this one, uh, uh, they could be wrong. The majority of Americans, like, thought that MLK was a fucking terrorist. Oh, for sure. They thought he he was just up here stirring up shit all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe he should have slowed down. Maybe he should have waited. He he wanted too much too soon. Hmm. So, yeah, I, yeah. Listen, man. If you if you got parents, man, talk to your parents. They'll tell you these stories. They thought it was too much. They thought that maybe the civil rights movement was asking for too much. Yeah. It, asking for equality was asking for too much. Yeah. Too too much too fast. Too much. Yeah. You know. So it's just, it's just one of those things that's just, it's just weird to me that, well, not weird to me. It's when are we going to have that conversation? When are we going to have the conversation about um, how the majority of Americans don't understand the basics that they're fighting for? Like, oh, you know, oh, wow, you're just breaking the flag. It's like, why the fuck do you give a fuck about the flag so much? There, yeah. I, 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 I might have brought this up last time on the last show. I can't remember. But, like, 
I know I said it on, on Facebook. We had not fought. Like people go, you know, people fought and died for that flag, defending your freedoms and blah, 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 blah. Forgetting the idea that, you know, fighting for, he, he they fought and died for our freedoms, and that includes the freedom to protest and the freedom of speech. So, you know, in the loop here. But forgetting that. Nobody this century has fought or died for American freedom. You might be able to make an argument for maybe World War One or World War II. But even that, when you look at how American got into this war, they were not about American freedom. No. At all. You know? Not, not at all. Like, there has not been a... The, the current soldiers we have out here fighting for wars right now, they are not fighting for American freedoms. You cannot show me anywhere that proves that. Like, the idea of us... Think, think about... Go back to 9-11, right? When we went in and invaded Afghanistan. Again, that was revenge. It was not American freedom because here's the thing. I, I truly, truly do believe that terrorism is a problem. Definitely. Kills innocent people. Should be stamped out. Understand that. You got you to do that. Um, that's not fighting for American freedom. Because terrorism does not threaten American freedom. No. Like, when 9-11 happened... American lives. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Threaten American freedom. Um, the, the, the biggest threats to American freedom are inside the house. The call is coming from inside the house. Right? Yeah, <laughs> because, exactly. because what happened after 9-11 was you then had the Patriot Act pass, which is a bigger threat to American freedom than anything that happened in 9-11. Like yeah, Russia being involved in our election is a bigger threat to American freedom. Than right. Yeah. ISIS. Like, that's actually like, because here's the thing, I'm more likely as a black American, I am more likely to die at the hands of police officers or a white nationalist. I am more likely to die being executed by a white nationalist in a church, and I don't go to church than I am by an ISIS terrorist. So when you say that. Our troops are fighting for American freedom. That's just not fucking true. It's not. I'm sorry. It's not. They are not fighting for American freedom because American freedom is not threatened by anything ISIS does. Right. They can. They. 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 They might kill uh, American uh, lives here and there overseas, but in the grand scheme of things, is very. It's almost insignificant. But then but look Chris, at. The, but the, Chris, they're trying to institute Sharia law here in the United States. Yeah, right. We have to stop them. But that's a funny thing, though, right? Because then. So, if the American freedom is to, you know, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and all this other stuff, it's almost as if you're watching the um, American government use ISIS and, 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 and Islamic terrorists as a way to curb the American freedoms back home. That is the only way you can, like, like that's what's actually happening here. Because, you know, you see things like, oh, they're trying to create Sharia law back here in the United States, and we're going like, no, no, they're not. You can't. Yeah. You can't what do that. Look like? Yeah, we, we can't. You can't do that. And in, in the American system we have right now, you can't do that unless you're a white American, you're a white male uh, congressman, and you do things like you know, banning a woman's choice, right. or you or you're putting things into the Constitution like uh, uh, marriage between a man and a woman. That's right. when you want to get into Sharia law and you want to get into the, to to banning freedoms. That's what that looks like. But that's not coming from terrorists and coming from islamic terrorists that our government is fighting that's coming from straight white men in in congress right like so what american freedoms i want somebody to tell me if you if you know somebody out there who's like don't have them right in like what american freedoms is are our american go, uh, uh military fighting for right now uh they're fighting and dying for your freedom um they're fighting and dying in iraq uh honestly that does nothing for us over here for somebody's bank account, that's why it's freedom. Yeah, it, it, it does nothing for me over here. Like, you fighting and dying in Iraq, I'm sorry, it does nothing for me. It doesn't keep me safe. People are like, oh, I'm keeping you safe. No, you're actually not. You're not, because here's the thing. You're fighting, you keep, you're not keeping me safe from that. What happens when I'm shot by a police officer here? Like, so what, 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 where, how does that work? You know? You, you, you have Tamir Rice who probably got up every morning when he went to school Said the pledge, pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag, and then was shot dead by 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 an American police officer. What? Where? Right. Where? Where? Where were their freedoms then? Where? Where was the 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 American soldier freedom? Where was? Where was that? Where was that coming from? Where's that at? Right. 
I mean, and, and again, this is not me shitting on the military and shitting on soldiers out there. No, they're doing their job. They're doing it's a hard job, and I would never want to do it. Um, but let's be honest about what they're doing. You're, they're not actually out there fighting for American freedoms. That is just not technically what American foreign policy is right now, because our because our, our our freedom is not our freedom in in our our, our freedoms in, in in the American way of life is not threatened here. It reminds me of um, uh, if anybody's ever read uh, Saga. It's like, yeah, it's like reading Saga, right where you have the two uh, nations, uh, Reef and Landfall, and they realize that um, if they're fighting this war, probably shouldn't fight on our own soil because, uh, you know, we're going to destroy, we're gonna destroy, our, we're gonna destroy ourselves. So now what they do is they have, they have satellite wars. They, they, everybody fights the wars on these other, in these other nations, other, other planets, stuff like that. But the two home worlds go on like nothing happens. They're, 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 they're the United States, where all the wars are actually fighting have nothing to do with anything here. Right. You know, like n- nothing that happens in Iraq is actually protecting anything we're doing here. It's protecting people's um, opinions. It's, 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 it's helping, you know, the government itself uh, save face, but none of it, you know, is about protecting our freedoms. Like hell Vietnam had nothing to do with protecting American freedoms. So, you know, it's it's basically, you know, America trying to be a superpower and hold on to like since World War II, the wars that America has gotten into are not about American freedom. They're about protecting our um, our, our superpower status. That's what that is. That's all that is. And that's not a commentary on um, our soldiers. That's a commentary on our foreign policy and a commentary on our government. You know, right. soldiers do what they have to do. Like that's their job, but let's not allow um, our government and its shitty foreign policy trick us into thinking that these people are dying, fighting, and dying for our freedoms. They're not. That's how. That's how they. That's how they're allowed to get away with this shit. That's how George W. Bush was able to get away with saying you're either with me or against me, and right. you got to support our troops. He was able to get away with that because he he's, he he sold the idea that you had to go to war in Iraq. For American freedom, but that was a lie. Right. Yeah, we're told that, and people just parrot it without really thinking right. about what it means right. and how it looks logistically. You got, you got yeah. Did. You got a lot of new people who joined the military after 9-11 because they felt this sense of pride and patriotism, like, "Yo, we got to, we were attacked. We have to defend, you know, our, our, our freedom." And the way that it was presented at it was like, "Yeah, they are attacking our a, a way of life. We got to stamp them out. We got to do this, everything like that." But if we pulled back a little bit, we'd have been like. Hmm. Okay, they did attack us. We need to handle it and we need to deal with it. But here's how this happened. This is why it happened. Let's be smart about how we deal with this. We don't don't just need to, you know, have an influx in military spending, uh, military personnel, and doing all this and ramping all this stuff up. That's what we have to do. The only way America knows how to be a superpower is war. Right. That's that's the only way we know how to be a superpower. And so we keep staying in wars because that's the only way, that's how we got to be a superpower. It's the only way we're going to remain a superpower is by doing that kind of stuff. And none of that is really about American freedom. It, yeah, it, it, it just is the U.S. military flexing their muscles over and over again. Yeah, it, it, it has nothing to do with that. So, you know, once you like and I don't know how we it's become so ingrained in us now. I don't know how we get away with it, but it's I get away from that. But it's. um, It's just one big lie. Because, like, you know, it's like during, again, during the Bush years when there was all this talk about patriotism, this, patriotism, that. But it comes out and you find out that they were cutting stuff from the um, the VA and the Veterans Hospital had the, there was a big scandal with um, the Veterans Hospital that wasn't, it was completely disgusting. It was here, here in America, it was completely disgusting. It was falling apart. Our veterans weren't being taken care of. So it's like, we like the, we like to partake, we like to play patriotism. Right. But when it comes to actually being patriotic and actually caring about the troops and making sure they have the help they need when they get home, they're, they're taking care of PTSD and things like that. Nope. We don't do that shit. My dad went to Vietnam and just, just only recently got diagnosed with the fact that he had PST, PTSD. Yeah. Like, come on, guys. Don't, 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 don't give me this fake, oh, yeah, we're, 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 we're for the troops. No, you're, we're, we're not. This is not what this is about. It's never been about that. They're for telling black people to shut up. All right. And hide behind any kind of shield they have, the the, the anthem, the troops, uh, quote unquote America ideas, re, quote reverse racism, whatever they want to hide behind, they'll hide behind to tell people to shut up when they don't want to hear what they have to protest about. Yeah, that's that's all. It is. That's what 
It's always gonna, it's gonna, they're gonna move the goalposts. It'll be mm-hmm. something else. Yep. Always something else. So, all right. Two more things to get out of here. Uh, one, uh, one of the funny story. Actually, I guess both of these are kind of funny. Um, so, uh, saw this article oh, a couple weeks ago, and um, then there was a follow up to it. So apparently, there's this woman going around, and where is this? The, the, the pooper jogger lady. Yes, in Colorado. <laughs> this is the <laughs> yeah. mad, the mad pooper. The mad pooper. And yeah. uh, I was gonna, I was gonna. I mean, this is a woman who's jogging around Colorado Springs, in the last two months, and um, she, you know, has to go sometimes, and she, um, squat down, takes a shit, and then wipe, whips up some, some. Some some tissue wipes her ass and then keeps on going, yeah. um, and uh, <laughs> the the family feel like they're being they're being uh, tormented by this woman because uh, they keep trying to tell her they've actually written um, notes like on the walkway. So to the female jogger that's continuously using our walkway as her toilet, please stop immediately. You've been exposing yourself to our children, and the police yep. have been contacted twice. <laughs> so it's been, so. Um, but then the story takes a turn because um, then a supposed family friend of the jogger comes out and says that um, she uh, actually has a traumatic brain injury. Oh, no. Yeah. So they say it's, um, yeah. So I, like I said, I had a lot of, a lot of these jokes, but you know, when you find out that the woman has a traumatic brain injury, you kind of, you, you don't want to stoop down to the toilet humor with that. Cause no. you know, yeah, <laughs> no. yeah just, absolutely not. Yeah. You know, it kind of stinks when you have a woman who was suffering from a brain injury. So, <laughs> though, I, I got to say, though, because they're saying, so he's saying that it, it, he has a brain injury. Yeah. And, uh, but they're saying that the mental issues come from her sex reassignment surgery. So, it does also kind of smell kind of funny. So, it's just, I don't know about this. Because, how do you have a traumatic brain injury after your ginger reassignment surgery? Uh, that's a really good point. Yeah, I don't believe this shit. So, um, yeah, the, the guy who claimed he took this videos down, but uh, he claimed the woman's actions are no different from breastfeeding in public, which I will say is um, horseshit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> complete. 100%. Yeah, kind of, kind of horseshit there because um, breastfeeding in public is one thing. Um, shitting out logs and leaving them there yeah. for other people to find is. Uh, kind of a public health, you know, like there's no public health issue with a woman breastfeeding in public. Yeah, feeding her child. There's Versus definitely a public like, health issue with you like, taking a shit on the sidewalk. Leaving human waste everywhere. Ah, uh, just, just saying. That is kind of disgusting. It's kind of weird. That, like, I'm, what, what gets me is they've actually had pictures, they have like pictures of her coming and going. I'm like, wait, yeah. how do you not run up to this woman? Yeah. Like you, how do you not run up to her? Like, uh, what was it? What was the movie? It's, it's a Friday. It's like, yo, hey, Smokey out here <laughs> taking yeah, the shit. Right. Like, how do you not do that? Like, come on, dog. Like, how do you not do that shit? I come out there. I'd run up to her, and be like, hey, yo, she's over here taking a shit. Like, come yeah. on, man. Like, oh, this is disgusting. This is so so disgusting. But this goes back to it, it, again it comes full circle because we t- we open the show talking about how disgusting uh, some people are. I know, and um, this is why I can believe this. I can believe that she's actually doing this, and it has nothing to do with um, uh, you know, a traumatic brain injury. So, yeah, just the mad pooper strikes back. So, just going to be kind of interesting, interesting seeing how that goes down. So, all right, last thing before we get out of here, um, finally back with just shout out to everybody who sent me this shit. <sighs> do you even sci-fi, bro? Oh no! What are they doing this week? Oh uh, yeah, I kind of like this one. <sighs> All right, do you even sci-fi, bro? Just by the way, also saw Blade Runner uh, twenty forty nine. Have a review out. Uh, written review out for this. We won't have an audio one for it. Um, you guys know I'm not a Blade Runner fan. This one's good. It's just really, it's, it's really fucking long. It's yeah. really, it's two hours and 40 fucking minutes. So do with that what you will. <laughs> do with that what you will. I mean, it's not, it's way better than the first film, but it's also two hours and 40 fucking minutes. So I, I, I got nothing. So anyway, um, do you even stop our bro where we just look at all these crazy 
stories that all, all we can involve sex bots for right now. And I Dude, the sex bots are a craze. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know this was gonna I didn't know this was gonna be a thing. I didn't know this was a thing. I, I really did. Um but it feels like every week there's a new sex bot story. Right. And uh this one is the worst one. Interactive sex doll breaks down after a huge number of customers try it out at an Austrian <laughs> electronics fair. What? All right. There's just so many things which just like, <laughs> a right huge there. number of customers. Dog was like, "Hey man, what's this line for?" Uh <laughs> We're trying out this new toy they got. Hey, Why hey, is the PS4? Hey, hey, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> you ever you ever want to rape a woman but she can't she can't yeah. she can't stop you? Yeah. Getting this line for it right here. Um, yeah, I, I can imagine people trying to explain what they're in line for. <clears throat> the three thousand pound pound I think that's pounds in uh in money. Uh three thousand sex- pounds? Yeah. Well, like yeah. Well it, 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 that's, that's a monetary unit, not like not like actual weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm yeah. aware, but yeah. still three thousand pounds. Well, you know, the um the real dolls when we were talking about uh, when we when we first came up with this segment were like fifteen thousand dollars. Shit. <laughs> right. Yeah, these people aren't paying so much money for. Anyway, uh, which was the star attraction at the big star attraction? Again, so so. <laughs> this is when when men three thousand dollars. I could get you a like fake, a fake sort of like you know baller starter kit. I can get you so you can go to Vegas and kind of look like you got dough and maybe land somebody versus like a bot. Like I can do that. That's a better service than three thousand dollars on a robot. So. So as I read this, I just want you guys to keep in mind. Women say that men are trash all the time, and we you know, something you get you get you feel a little constantly. Kind of you're like, oh wait, wait a minute, hold on, we're not all like. When you finish reading something like this, though, all you can do is shake your head and go like that Alonzo Morning gif where he, he kind of seems like he's upset at something. Then he kind of thinks, then he kind of thinks about it. He goes, no, well, it's kind of right. That's what yeah. this is. Like this is the I uh, won't well, know. They got a point because. The three thousand pound sex bot robot, which was a star attraction at a big electronics fair, star attraction in Austria this month, has broken down after a large number of visitors got overly excited. Got overexcited. Samantha, the the sex doll, had been showing off her skills, which included oh, reaching God. to touch, hugging, and moaning, and remembering individuals she has interacted with at the Arts Electronica Festival in Linz. However, S- Samantha's creators have now been forced to send her to be repaired. After visitors left the robot heavily soiled, whichever that fucking means, and oh. with broken limbs. Oh, they were going hard on this robot. Literally. Samantha is the latest development in a growing trend in Austria, where which has seen brothel customers performing robots over sexual intercourse with a human. Holy fucking shit. Wow. Samantha's developer, uh, Sergi, uh, Ser- Sergey uh, Santos from Barcelona, Spain, described the way the, vi- the way describe the way the visitors approach the robotic the robot as barbaric. Yeah, don't fucking oh, think. Yeah, you don't think. The people mounted Samantha's breasts, her arms and legs. Two fingers were broken. She was heavily soiled. Ugh. People can be bad because they did not understand the technology and did not have to pay for it. They treated the doll like barbarians. Mitchell Santos and said Samantha had to be sent back in a parcel to Barcelona for repairs and cleaning, but he added Samantha can endure a lot. She will pull through. Yeah. Wow. Could you imagine creating like like walking in the lab and being like, hey, I created interactive AI robot. And someone's like, yeah. But can you teach it how to suck dick? Can you do that? <laughs> like, uh, I guess. Maybe, maybe I can teach it that, but it's interactive. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. But I need it. I need a blowjob function. Like oh, people are crazy. Oh my god, men are crazy. Uh, Mitchell Santos said Samantha can remember someone has she has interacted with in the past, and as she communicates according to the way she had been treated, be uh, and and she as she communicates according to the way she had been treated by them before. Oh, that would be great. And this again. This is how you. This is how you get the robot. You know, apocalypse coming. You know, yeah. you get the robot yeah, apocalypse get coming. Safe word. Right. This is how you get the robot apocalypse coming because you literally have men who will treat, uh, uh, they will treat a fake robot 
the same way they tre- imagine imagine how bad men treat women who are living and breathing. Now you give them something that they believe is not human at all, right? Because it, it isn't. Uh, and yeah, no, this is this is all fucking bad. Right. The robot reacts to touch, speech, multiple languages, and 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 is even said to be able to learn new things thanks to artificial intelligence software. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, that's just <laughs> right. She, you just had this robot sitting here getting molested and raped by all the, and now, and it has an AI to learn. Oh, that's going to be, mwah, that's beautiful, guys. Yeah. Wonderful. Good jobs. Good job, you fucking animals. Um, right. Samantha approaches visitors at the festival by asking, How are you? Is even, and even seen looking deeply, uh, people deep in their eyes or handing out hugs. According to oh, one God. tester, Samantha moans and reacts to having her breast touched, and Santos adds that she is able to replicate a female orgasm at a ho- higher sex frequency. Uh, basically, oh, meaning, we're ba- die. Ba- we're die ba- real good. basically meaning that uh, men, you are not able to get women uh, pleasure and, and orgasm because you fucking suck. So we program the robot to have orgasms, or basically have fake orgasms, so you feel better about yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who yes. who was a part of that robot gangbang? Do they keep names? No, I, I was, they, they should have. They should have taken they names. Should. They should have taken pictures. Should have had to sign a waiver. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the the price that does not seem to be putting customers off at Santos base. Barcelona. He already sold fifteen Samanthas. The growing number of brothels in Austria, where prostitution is illegal and regulated, are adding sex bots to the roster. It follows the success of sex doll Christian Christian uh, Christian uh, Fanny, who had become the most popular attraction at the at the brothel in the capital, Vienna. Wow, how do you how do you even explain a robot sex doll at your house? You pretend it's a maid, like it's the Jetsons. I it just starts moaning. <laughs> no, that's that's really that. well. Can you get, if you think about it? Okay, we don't understand this, but you think about the way some men react around women. Yeah, it makes total sense because they yeah. can't. Why is there moaning coming from your closet? Uh, I don't know. No. I forgot to turn Samantha off. Yeah, I forgot to turn her off. She's having an orgasm in the closet. But, right when, you, now. Wait, but when you think about, when you think about how so many how many when you think about how many how how so many women I mean women so many men treat women and react to women to begin with, it makes sense. It it, it makes sense that you would have, um, uh, women uh, that I mean uh, men that uh, just see women as sex objects. They see yeah. them as just sex objects to give them their pleasure. And so the ability to have a woman-like thing that they can have sex with when they want to, uh, make make it all about them, make it all about right. the man, uh, and they can turn off whenever they want, I can definitely see how yeah. men would prefer, some men would prefer this over a woman. I can't wait till I see someone like lying in the line of Geek Squad with their robot sex bot trying mm-hmm. to get it fixed. Can't wait. It's just so bad. Everything about this is bad. Everything about this is bad. So, all right, folks. Um, I'm gonna get ready to end it here. Um, we didn't get any new uh black woman shout out stuff today, and I didn't. Uh, t- there, there's kind of st- some stuff I wanted. To, I was gonna mention. I'll have several next week. Um, uh, not next week, in, in two weeks. Um, unless uh, Tim, do you have anybody you want to shout out? I do have a shout out. Oh, actually. okay. Go go ahead and do that then. Uh, my friend Maya. She's uh she lives in San Francisco. She's doing stand up for the first time tonight. Actually. Oh shit. Yeah, she she like did like a short little open mic like last year, and this guy was like, "We need to get you on the show." So she's got like five minutes of material. Um, you can follow her on Twitter. It's Maya Janelle M A I A Janelle J A N N E L E. She's funny. Uh, she's always been like a hilarious storyteller. Uh, so I'm I'm excited to see you know how she does and how it looks. But yeah, yesterday she hit me. She was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be on stage tomorrow night." <laughs> awesome 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 we're like five minutes so yeah so shout out to her man for being bold enough to because i i couldn't do it oh no, Just be no, like, no i'm not a comic i'm gonna do six minutes of jokes and get on stage and tell them <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh for everybody else uh again if you're a black woman you're a business please uh, email us at bwbusiness at mtrnetwork.net um latoya will get back to you setting something up and i'll do shout outs but yeah i had some some women i wanted to shout out but i was like let me um I want to put together a better list and do some more research uh, to get the information out there. So I'll have it back. We're not going to have an insanity check next week. We're going to be in New York Comic Con. Uh, I can. I don't know. It's weird this year, man. I was just talking to. Um, I was talking about Jeff about this. Maybe we'll get him on 
the show uh, later in o- o- October, but this year in New York Comic Con just feels way, it not it's not as big as that. Like it'll probably be as many people, but with the opportunity, the press opportunities, and the people that are going to show up, it wasn't as big as last year. It's a really mm-hmm. smaller. It just it, not smaller, but it just it didn't have the same opportunities. Some people I wanted to reach out to and talk to, but um, we did get Agent of Shield. We're going to have some press interviews with them. And that's the only one I cared about. So I got the one I wanted. <laughs> and so everything else, everything else will be uh, icing on the cake. So we'll have stuff like that coming out uh, all next week. Make sure you go to mtrnetwork.net. Check out our Comic-Con Central page. We'll be putting out stuff uh, all week uh, and through the weekend for that. And then we'll be back the following week with Insanity Check. So, um, and uh, again, follow all the shows. And uh, Deepon and I are going to record another Character Corner tomorrow. Uh, we already have a Thor one in the bag. We get, we're going to record Batgirl tomorrow, and then we got Thor Part Two. We're going to re- hopefully record, and there might be one more we get in before he gets married. So we're we're doing we're doing a lot of work here, man. <laughs> yeah, the countdown for the big day. Huh? I know we're going yeah. So if you're a premium member, you get to hear him talk about it on uh, on premium. So sign up for premium. We got a hell no cupid with Deepom on there, and I talk we talk about all this stuff. So um, it'd be great, man. Uh, Tim, thank you very much for joining me. Tell people where they can find you at, man. Uh, they can find me on the People's Critic blog dot com. They can find me on Twitter, People's Critic, Snapchat, Instagram. I was just recently on my friend John's podcast about to review, talking about literally defending Love Actually, something I thought I'd never <laughs> do. I was on there in defense of a rom com this week, so <laughs> you, can, you can hear me giving a passionate defense for Love Actually. So yeah, yeah, that's where you can find me. Cool. All right, man. Uh, everyone else, thank you guys very much for um. We get this. We're not playing. We're not gonna play our intro. Outro. There we go. All right. Thank you guys very much. Uh, very much again. Remember, sign up for mtrnetwork.net. Uh, sign up for the newsletter. Uh, MTR Premium. Everything we got going on over there. And then make sure you subscribe to the shows. iTunes, Stitcher Radio, uh, Google Play, wherever you get this stuff at. Uh, check it out there. And until next time, we are out of here. Peace. <laughs>